Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Welcome to our Sunday nights at seven o'clock. Um, we just want to welcome everybody on tonight. Uh, give everybody a second to come on here. Um, and while we're waiting, let me just uh, give a shout out to all the, the dads out there. I know I finally got some gray in my beard. Not finally, I guess it's been coming on for a while. But yeah, <laughs> um, uh, yeah I just want to give a, a shout out That's to amazing. all of the dads that have made it. You know, they're probably granddads and stuff by now, but I want to give a real special shout out to all of the new fathers. So uh, a young man in our church, shout out Zach. Uh, he has just become a father like a week and a half ago. Yeah. And so just a great shout out to to all the first timers and and and, and thank goodness just for good dads. Mm -hmm. Thank goodness for the yeah. fathers that are just out there and they're they're yeah. raising their children and being the being the priest of their homes and just just a, a an extra big shout out and love you guys thank you so much for we, we are the backbone we are mm -hmm. the backbone of the home amen and sometimes uh it, it's not always an easy task to be a father but it's certainly uh one that is needed it's certainly one that is fulfilling yeah there, there is no satisfaction uh in this life uh, like being a father and God's even a father to us. So happy Father's Day to all of the dads out there. Not to absolutely take anything away from the mothers. Um, lo yeah. love, we love the mothers. Mm -hmm. Amen. It, there's something, it's something special to see when you see dads with the kids. Yeah. You can all they're trying to, trying to handle the kids. It's, yeah. That's always something special to see. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and you know, we can, we, we always see the, the benefit of the one, uh, most impactful because they're the first ones that the enemy tries to take yeah. out and the enemy has tried to take the the father out of the american household mm -hmm. now for years and years and years and years so so happy father's day to yeah. everyone out there um we love you um bless you um second of all if we look a little more tan today <laughs> it's because we're, and, and i might fall asleep on tonight's live so so we need prayer um, but we, we've been out all day yesterday, just taking care of the land and getting ready for the July 8th. We're so excited. Um, it's just so nice to be able to sit back and pray over that land and just, uh, just raise our expectations. We just know God is going to do something amazing. Um, so what I'm talking about is July 8th. If you haven't heard, um, please share, Pl yeah. please go onto our Facebook and, and it's one yeah. awesome way that you can, uh, support this, uh, support this ministry is just by sharing these lives, by, by helping, helping us get the word out, um, helping us spread the gospel of Jesus Christ and, and helping us to, to, to have events like what we're going to have on July 8th to just raise expectations. We know that God is going to do something incredible. July 8th. So if you can, we just want to invite everybody to come and join us. We're going to be doing water baptisms and uh, praise and worship, and it's going to be outdoors. Um, yesterday, I was putting poles up so we can string up the lights and all that good stuff, and it's it's just looking beautiful. So we are super excited, and we just want to extend an invitation to anybody who wants to come. We don't have a every Sunday um, church. We attend uh, a, another church by with a, with an incredible man of God, um, that we give honor to, that we serve his ministry, and we are so blessed to be able to serve Liberty um, and, and our great fellowship, and we, we love them dearly because that's what it's about. It's about serving the body. But th this will become a, a normal thing for us that, you know, once a sat Saturday every few months or so, we're, we're just going to go after God um, with every, everything that we have and uh, just let Amen. God do what God does. Amen. So this will be our... Uh, first in a while, July 8th, and, and we just want to invite everybody to come and join us. That's what we see over here on this other side of the screen. All right. So without further ado, um, we're tonight blessed to have Josh and Sierra Griffin on with us. Um, some wonderful, wonderful, wonderful core folks with us and that we've been blessed enough to to meet. And, uh, you know, I, I I know Josh and we haven't been able to get to know each other extremely, extremely well yet that we will be able to um, yeah. through the through the times and seasons that we're going to be going with core shout out to all my core people. Um, and tonight was actually my first time that I've got to meet Sierra and yeah, me too. Josh was Josh's oh, first time to meet Pamela. Yeah, so right. uh, um, we're excited. Uh, we're going to go into I don't even want to. I don't even want to crack the seal on it yet. This is going to be an incredible night, and it's going. It's going to help. It's going to really dive into some really scriptural things, and uh, you know, scripture helps us. It builds us. It shows us what to expect. 
in the times. It, it it really helps even moments in our life feel a little frail. Or what's up, Julio? What's up, Rob? Happy Father's Day to you guys too. But Scripture always helps us in the trying times. And uh, the devil is a liar with these stupid connection <laughs> issues. <laughs> and so uh, that, that's what we're going to dive into tonight. So without further ado, I'm going to bring on Josh and Sierra Griffin. What is up, my family? Hey, guys. How we doing? Uh, just, how we doing? We, uh, computer we got to. Uh, okay. No, hey, no hey, worries. Hey, We've hey, got hey, our three-month-old down here under the table. So if you hear some coos and, and whatnot... That's uh, that's him, and the other two are uh, running around out there. So we'll try our best to not have any distractions. But as uh, <laughs> as parents with young kids, that's uh, it is what right. it is at this stage. We're in survival mode Amen, most days bro. for sure. Yeah. For sure, but no, Jack, Pamela, we want to honor you guys. So, brother, Thank you, you so much you. for having us on. Uh, we love you all. Like Jack, like you mentioned earlier, I've been fortunate enough to meet you in person once, and then obviously fellowship with you. Uh, several times online with our other core brothers and and uh, just a it's a sweet season again that we're all stepping into with the Lord and it, it's awesome to know that there's other you know willing vessels out there like y'all that are willing to be used by the Lord uh, in any uh, really form or fashion and super excited for y'all's July 8th event mm -hmm. uh, we're only a couple hours north of y'all so I, I think we're definitely going to try to load up the family and, and come down and and serve y'all and, and uh, see what the Lord wants to do there. So just want to give a shout out for that too. So praise God. Babe. Yeah, no, I'm awesome. super excited, super honored that you guys um, wanted to have us on here. And I'm so excited to share and also just to hear from you guys. And even him, he's been, his nose has been in his Bible and I'm like really anxious to see the revelation that he got from the Lord. So yeah, this is, yeah. Uh, praise, this yeah. is a really cool topic. I mean, yeah. it's not the, it's not the most sexiest topic, if you will. Not a lot of people like to talk about persecution, but it's but it's a hundred percent. It's needed and it's necessary in today's day and age. Um, and I'm I'm really looking forward, uh, Jack and Pamela, to hearing y'all's perspective on this too, because uh, you know we're we're a younger couple, and and we glean from from those who are more you know mature than us in the faith and things like that. So uh, so super excited to to be on here with y'all. So uh, a little bit about ourselves here. You know for a few minutes so we could lay the foundation before we jump in uh so obviously we are josh and sierra griffin uh we have a five-year-old daughter adley two-year-old son noah and uh, a three-month-old judah so our <laughs> our uh, our house is very busy at this stage in our life but it's a it's a blessing for sure and uh, we currently hail in the greenville south carolina area uh, we're from actually illinois and the lord definitely called us down to South Carolina for a season. And um, yeah, we're here. We we love the Lord with our whole entire heart and soul. And really our life's mission and our purpose is to, yep. to serve him. And a lot of times that looks like serving him through serving each other or serving the Lord through our kids or really wherever we can pour back in to other people because we've been blessed and fortunate enough to really to receive a lot from a lot of powerful couples and powerful men and women in our life that, that, that the Lord has allowed us to, to interact with and, and uh, do life with. So uh, super excited to, to be on here with y'all tonight and, and share a little bit for sure. Amen. And, and, and so I'm going to go ahead and talk about what we're, 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 you touched on it a little bit, but tonight we're talking about persecution. And this, this was, I, I don't come up with these things like two months in advance, right? I really allow, Holy Spirit to navigate what we talk about on these lives. And um, because I honestly, I don't, you know, I, I, I don't know that far in front. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kind of just doing this thing at the Holy Spirit's beck and call. Right. And, and I think that's how we should really do life. You know, pl mm -hmm. plan. Sure. You know, write down the vision so you make it plain so others can run with it and all that good stuff. But when it comes to to, to planning these things, like I don't even really know if someone's going to be able to make it. So we're probably like four or five weeks out with these things. So I just allow Holy Spirit to give it, give, give me uh, what he feels. Mm -hmm. And so um, the persecution thing, the first thing we just really want to lay groundwork on is we're not here to incite fear. 
into the body of Christ. Like we, we, we want you to understand like right here off of the get go, like this is not about fear or fear mongering or pushing fear. Like persecution is something that um, I think all of us could probably look into one part or another of our lives. Right. And we can really see like I really had to go through some stuff for, then at some level. And we're going to get into that and talk about different levels of persecution and what that really looks like, especially in the American church. Because mm -hmm. uh, I, I think sometimes we get salt in, a little salt in our cut and we think we're, <laughs> we're dying of persecution. Right. Yeah. And That's so right. uh, but 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 we do want to talk about the different levels, because, you know, the, the things that we face every single day in our life of being talked about and cast aside and Th those are levels of persecution. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to belittle those things. Um, but at some time in our life, some other time, like we've went through something and, and it's really persecutions really used by the enemy where he'll infiltrate into someone's mind. Right. We know that Jesus came riding into the in, into Jerusalem and the same people that were screaming Hosanna, Hosanna. Right. Glory to God in the highest. Like they they knew who he was. They were saying God, the God with us, like mm -hmm. they understood Jesus was the son of God. Like just a few days later, they're screaming, crucify him. Mm -hmm. Right. Crucify him. And so what what was that? We saw the infiltration of religion and the infiltration of the demonic really mm -hmm. work behind the scenes mm -hmm. to push persecution on the Savior. Mm -hmm. Right. And, but a lot of times, like we can feel very alone. In our persecution, we, we, we just feel like we're stuck and nobody knows and understands where we're at mm -hmm. and all these other things. So this is really a topic that uh, that I was like, Lord, seriously. <laughs> and then he gave me like the one, two, three, fours, like all within 10 minutes. And, and that's when I jotted it down and and uh, sent it to you and sent it to Pamela as well. And so, uh, man, I'm, I'm just going to release that to you and let you just really go into what you feel the definition of persecution really is. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's it's funny that you just said that because whenever you sent me the topic, I'm like, Lord, why do we have to talk about persecution? Like, why can't we talk about like, love and peace and, you know, the fruits of the spirit and stuff like that, like something that's, that's fun yeah. and popular, right? But I'll tell you what, throughout, you know, the last really week that I started to dive into this and, you know, admittedly the last couple of days, um, but man, the Lord has just dropped some pretty cool revelation and some nuggets into my lap, just about um, obviously the levels of persecution, but um, almost just rejoicing in persecution. And again, I, I know, Jack, you're going to you're going to dive into the different levels. But, um, you know, oftentimes, at least in our life, whenever we've gone through trials and tribulations and and even higher level persecution, like on the other side, it's always just been it's been, it's been amazing, frankly, like the Lord has just almost just locked arms with us and has taken us by the hand and he's never left us nor forsaken us. And we actually just walked out of, which is another reason why this is pretty cool. We just walked out of a season of, you know, some really pretty difficult trials and tribulations in our life. Like uh, it's been a roller coaster over the last couple of months from, uh, from losing. So we, we had little man, and two weeks later, I lost my job. I'm the sole provider of our family. Um, you know, a, a car wreck, a death, two hospitalizations wow. in our family for people that are really close to us. And just just really some, some, some thoughts and some attacks just on our family and just on us relationally and, and various things like that. But, you know, through it all, you know, the one thing that has remained steadfast is our faith in the Lord. And, you know, we've talked about We've talked several times, like, I don't know how you can live life without knowing and walking with Jesus. And throughout, Amen. like, you know, the, the times of uh, the trying of our faith and the testing of our faith and throughout this whole process, I kept telling myself, like, Lord, if I can wake up whenever things are going really well and say, hey, I love you and I praise you, I have to do the same thing yeah. when things are not going well, when things, frankly, just suck. Like I have to have the same level, yeah. if not more love for the Lord, because what mm -hmm. kind of witness would I be if I just praised him whenever things were good? Like, you know, mm -hmm. I, and throughout the process of the last couple of months, because that's the most recent time, you know, our faith has grown substantially because of persecution. And, you know, whenever I say persecution, um, you know, a lot of it's just trials and tribulations. Like whenever I think of true persecution, uh, you know, I think of our our brothers and sisters in the Middle East or our brothers and sisters 
um, you know, in, in parts of Asia, basically parts of the world to where if you proclaim the name of Jesus, if you step out of your house, you run the risk of just call it how it is. You run the risk mm-hmm. of being killed for his name's sake. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the, the definition of persecution is to treat someone cruelly or unfairly, especially because of how you believe religiously. And, mm-hmm. you know, whenever I think of persecution, obviously you touched on it earlier. Um, you know, we instantly go to Jesus and obviously the life that he lived and how could anybody, if they truly knew Jesus, how could they persecute him and how could they crucify the savior of the world? And it also just mm-hmm. goes back to you throughout the process of persecution and through trials and tribulations, the enemy wants nothing more than to isolate you, make you feel like you're alone and for you to just frankly yeah. abandon all hope because whenever the enemy yeah. takes your hope, he takes your lifeline. And whenever he takes your lifeline, you're just, you're frankly, you're, you're dead in the water. Right. So I, I don't know if you have anything to add, you know, regarding yeah. persecution. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Go ahead. No, no, have it. Have it. Go ahead. Okay. Um, obviously, you know, we talk about like Josh said, persecution. We think of other countries. Like America is so fortunate. I mean, gosh, we don't even share the gospel with coworkers when we have the opportunity or somebody at the gas station. But like overseas, you know, they can't even, you know, it's a secret. It, they, they can't even, you know, barely allow themselves to be known as that. And you have the Taliban knocking on somebody's door in Afghanistan and killing their children right in front of them. Like that's that's persecution. You know, the, the American church, um, we, we take it for granted oftentimes. And then you also think of the, the persecutor himself, Satan. And when you live a life for Christ and, and especially a life of obedience and devotion to Christ, the persecutor himself comes to steal, kill and destroy. And so oftentimes we find ourselves um, hopefully more people than most in bondage earlier on in their life because the plan for their life is already being orchestrated out. Right. And so the persecutor Mm -hmm. himself is going to bring torment. He's going to bring bondage. He's going to bring sin into, into your life. And, you know, it's, it's great when you have the opportunity to find Jesus at the right time in your life and be set free from those things, but it doesn't stop the the attacks from coming. So, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think you make such a good point too, because us, us in the American church, right? We we, we have been very, very, like extremely fortunate, um, because what we define a lot of times as persecution, not saying it's not, just saying it's not as 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 hell on your doorstep as a lot of places in the world. And I think that the Lord right now is that he like the Lord always prepares us. That's one good thing about prophecy, right? Is that it walks us through a preparation stage because it shows us the heart of the father and the heart of the father is always good to his children, right? So when he begins to give us lessons like this, it really makes us have to key into it because he's given us these things for a reason, right? Mm-hmm. And and I'm not naysaying and, and, and throwing a bunch of shade all over, you know, our, our nation or anything, but the, you know, the, 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 the biblical stance that we have to take into consideration is things get worse before they get better. That's, that's just revelation, right? I believe that we're living in the last days, right? Mm -hmm. And God prepares us. And just like walking in faith, right? We start off with a small faith. We start off with a measure of faith that the Lord allows us to, to start praying over our children and start praying for a good life and, you know, praying that we sleep well and that he blesses our food and he moves us up and even praying for people with, you know, diseases. And we start praying for people with cancer. We pray for backs. We pray. And then we start praying, you know, you get over into, you know, raising the dead. Hey, let's, you know, you, you, you get stronger in your faith. And the same thing I believe goes for our persecution. So right now we, you know, we're in a place that, um, like America hasn't been before. Like that, there there hasn't been prosecution in the courts for people who refuse to bake a cake for a homosexual. You know, they want to stand on their belief and their faith in the yeah. word of God, right? And so they're being persecuted. They're literally being taken to court, and that's another level, right? That that's a that's a that's a level of persecution that they're taking them into the law system to to be able to destroy their life, right? Whether we like it or not, you know, that there, there's there there's places in our country right now that they're trying to take our Bibles because they're saying it's hate, right? That's yeah. a form of persecution. Yeah. 
And so we can see very rapidly, I, you know, just in my 41 years on this planet, like I have, I have seen a, 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 an acceleration, right, uh, in this country of, of what I never thought I would see of the demonic realm, right? And so God is preparing us. God always wants us to be able to stand. And so that's why I believe he's given us this now is that that we we have to come together as a body because, uh, I, you know, it, it really does two things. Persecution does two things. Um, it teaches us to pray for ourselves and others, mm -hmm. because when we do consider our brothers and sisters in China and Afghanistan, we, we gear into understanding how we should be praying for them, mm -hmm. how we should be sending ministering angels of fire. Right. When we when we see like the, the 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 ISIS holding Christians on the beach and literally taking a knife to their throat, that is reality of our world. And we have to be able to learn how to pray for them. But also in our own life, what persecution does in our own life. Right. Is that when we begin to walk through something, it pushes us closer if we're handling it right. It pushes us and, and we'll get into that. But it pushes us close closer into our prayer closets. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, for the, the book of John 15, 20, Jesus tells, says, remember the word that I sent to you. A servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me mm -hmm. and the word is persecuted, if they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. Mm -hmm. If they kept if if they kept my word, they will also keep yours. Right. And so uh, the second thing that it does is it will try your faith and your flesh. Persecution will always do those two things. It will show you how to pray and it will always try your faith and your flesh because you'll want to run <laughs> at any yeah. form of persecution. Your flesh man will want to take off. Yeah. You will want to conform. Right. I'm sure the people that didn't want to bake that cake for the, the homosexual yeah. couple, I'm sure in their flesh, they were like, this would be a lot easier if we just bake the dog on cake. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. The reality of it is it tries your flesh and your faith and your soul will feed whichever one is larger. Right. You will you will you will do whatever one is in your life that is strong. If your prayer life is stronger, you're going to lean into mm -hmm. God more and you're going to be strengthened in the persecution. Yeah. But if your flesh man controls your life. Yeah. then there's an exposure of that flesh being stronger in your life mm -hmm. and you will lean over into it. Yeah. So persecution, like we always get this bad sense of persecution, but when handled correctly, right? When, when handled in a mature way and, and, and put on, like it's a promise. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'll let you run away with that. Like is, is persecution truly a biblical promise that it may be if we're not facing it, maybe we're not really walking it out. Yeah, that's that's so good. And your last point really sums it all up. That, that's a power sentence. Like if you're not facing some sort of suffering trial or persecution, are you really walking hand in hand with the father? And and my response to that would be bluntly, no. Like if you're in a deep relationship with the Lord and the spirit takes you out into the world because we can't just be hibernating bears and stay in our house all day, right? Like you will experience the enemy trying to come out to you in multiple areas. And, you know, Ephesians 6, 12, we do not, you know, wrestle against flesh and blood. You know, we, we are living in a, in a world to where we have a fleshly body, but we're spirits in a, in a, mm -hmm. in a, in a body. Right. And so there is a, there's a war going on every day, the demonic realm versus the heavenly realm. And we're caught almost in the middle of it because we still have a flesh and we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but at the same time, the Lord never, ever promises that our life on earth will be sunshine and rainbows and unicorns. Mm -hmm. Like there will be mm -hmm. suffering and trials of many kinds. Mm -hmm. And while you were talking, and I actually had this scripture written down, James 1, 2 through 4, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete and not lacking anything. And so the, the maturity piece, whenever you go through uh, trials and, and tribulations and, and just things in life that are rough, like it makes you mature. And think of it from a weightlifting yeah. perspective. It's impossible 
to gain and grow muscle if you're not lifting and if you're not working out. You know, I played college ball and we lifted and we worked out five days a week in order to get stronger. Like you have to push yourself to the limit. Come on. And it, if you Come don't on. push yourself to the limit, you're going to stay stagnant. And it's the same with our faith. I believe that the Lord gives us different levels of glory, line upon line, precept upon precept. And whenever you reach that max potential, sometimes in our flesh, we're like, oh, wow, we think this is it. Then boom, the Lord hits you with an uppercut. And he's like, no, I'm taking you higher. I'm going to bust you through that glass ceiling that that you thought that there was on your life. And, you know, throughout our time, we have been blessed to, to have started to mature in the faith because of the trials and the times that, um, you know, the, the, frankly, there are some times that, that we've walked through that I wouldn't wish it on anybody on one side of the fence. But at the same time, I almost would from a perspective of, through those times, like we were now looking at them from the outside, looking in and how we've conquered those times and they've made us who we are today. And, you know, we're, we're just getting started. And, and that's the beauty of walking with the Lord that each day is new. His mercies are new every morning. And, and again, you know, it is a biblical, it is a biblical perspective that, that we will suffer persecution. You know, obviously Jesus was born into an environment of persecution. Whenever the king wanted to kill the Lord from a young age, literally whenever he was a baby. So he faced trials of many kinds from the moment he came out of his mother's womb until he took Mm -hmm. his last breath on Calvary. There was persecution. There was suffering. And, you know, and, and obviously Jesus was a boy. He launched into his ministry at 30 and really his most famous sermon uh, was whenever it was Sermon on the Mount, and he he gave the constitution of our faith in the Beatitudes. And Matthew 5.10, mm-hmm. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom mm-hmm. of heaven. And I believe, mm-hmm. going back to your point, Jack, that, that if we're truly spirit-filled, born-again believers, walking and talking with the Lord and in communion with the Lord, the Lord is going to take us into places, I believe, to where your faith is going to get tested. Because the Lord yeah. does not want a bunch of lukewarm believers. You know, he says that yeah. he will spit you out of your mouth if you're lukewarm. And I believe that persecution, and I wrote it down, and I was going to get to it a little later, but I feel like it's a good thing to share now. Like, in, in, in some in some instances, it's, it is a good thing. Because what it does, it, it strips us from our, our worldly desires, and it realigns our priorities to the Father. Mm-hmm. So what are the three yeah. buckets of sin? The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And whenever we're going through persecution and trials, how can we have time to lust after another woman or lust after a new boat or lust after a new house? No, we're in communion with the father because it's a life or a death situation. It might not be life or death death physically, but a lot of times it's life or death spiritually. Lust Mm -hmm. of of the flesh, just the, the desires of the flesh. You know, sexual morality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, envy, drunkenness, uh, orgies, dissensions, factions. Whenever we are in communion with the Father, our mind is solely focused on Him. We don't have time to live in the world. And ultimately, the pride of life. And what happened, what caused a third of the angels to fall? Pride. And whenever we drop our pride... And whenever we realize, hey, you know what? We're frankly nothing. Let's call a spade a spade. We're nothing without the Lord. And if we don't have the yeah. Lord, we're just a pile of blocks. Mm-hmm. Like we're 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 doing. <laughs> it says in scripture, yeah. like if we don't receive the love of of Jesus, and if we don't believe in Jesus, and if we don't go through Jesus, we're headed for hell. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that is, I, I just feel like throughout this conversation, like. The Lord is inviting us into, no, I'm not, I'm not asking and I'm not praying for, you know, a terrorist to hold his knife to my throat. That's not what I'm saying. But I I really do feel the Lord inviting us all into a, into a, a moment and even a season of, of just testing of our faith because the testing of our faith gives us perseverance and endurance. And yeah, it may suck walking through it bluntly. But on the, yeah. on the outside looking in, whenever you've conquered it, it's like, yeah. wow, Jesus, like you did that. You held us. Yeah. You held us by your hand through the fire. So mm-hmm. yeah. that's and it's, it. 
I, I, I'll even say this for a minute. You got you guys know what it's like to be married, right? And, and we know we know that our relationship with Christ is a marriage, right? He is the groom, he is the bridegroom. We are his bride, right? And so through the bad times, right? Bad times are awful in a marriage. Let's just be real. Mm -hmm. They are horrible to walk through in a marriage. But the bond that it creates, that you know that no matter what, you're there for each other. Mm -hmm. And and so I'll let you guys speak to that because you're a married couple. Mm -hmm. Like what, th there's been times in your life and and you know that I am not alone. Right. And And, and so. You know, in, in a marriage, which that is symbolic to us in Christ, we are married to Christ. Yeah. And sometimes because the world attacks, I mean, have you guys ever had that that person that tried to come against your marriage? Mm -hmm. I mean, we have mm -hmm. we, 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 we've had, you know, individuals and, and God bless them, not, not speaking bad about individuals because our battle isn't against flesh and blood. But what I'm saying is that there has been outside things that's come against our marriage. Mm -hmm. All right. And so, it, you know, it, it solidifies like my wife knew, you know, through that, like there, there's there might be questions even through it. Like, it, are, are we going to make this? Mm -hmm. But when you come to the other side of that, there is a greater glory mm -hmm. because there is a new bond between you and the bridegroom. Right mm -hmm. there. When yeah. we walk certain walks, when we come through some things. Mm -hmm. Right. And we go, man, I don't know why. But Lord, are you even with me right now? Yeah. Are you even going to sustain me through this? But then we come out to the other end and our bond is in a new level of glory. Mm. Because, and, and I'm not obviously I'm not talking about, you know, the ISIS with the knife to the throat right now either. Right. I'm talking about the things that we face. Right. Yeah. Um, and and uh, again, you know, we'll get to those levels. And but the reality is, is there's people watching right now that you're walking through some things mm -hmm. and, 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 and you're going through and, and, and you're wondering, like, what in the world could come out of this that is good? Like they're talking about me. I may be in lawsuits. I may be getting drugged through the mud. I might have got kicked out because of my beliefs of full gospel because I prayed for the sick and expected healing. Right. That I've cast out demons that I've walked in a way that is, uh, uh, you know, lines up with scripture and I'm being made fun of. Right. Um, I'm being mocked. I'm being persecuted at my job site. And those those are levels of persecution. Mm -hmm. And so but but I, and, and you touched on it earlier. But I, I, I think about the, the, the reasoning behind the, the persecution in itself by the enemy is a demoralization. Right. He wants us to to, to just be demoralized in the, in the eyes of people and, and, and complete isolation, mm -hmm. because that's where the wolf tries to attack the prey. His goal is to, for us to give up. Amen. If he could demoralize mm -hmm. us. Exactly right. Um, that's so good, because mm -hmm. if he can demoralize us to the point that you'll quit, mm -hmm. you'll quit. You'll be like, this is not I'll, I'll compromise. Yeah. Like wh whatever it means, like I'm done with this. Mm -hmm. I can't walk this anymore. But again, if we lean into Christ mm -hmm. and that's why I really want, man, this is so good because I want our brothers and our sisters to know out there, like you're not by yourself. Yeah. Like you're not alone in this. Like there, there, there is a body that is there for you. That is love that, that will love you. That will pray for you. That will mm -hmm. walk with you while Christ walks with you. But you have to utilize your faith correctly. Mm -hmm. You have, you need to utilize the persecution. That's why it also says not to forsake the gathering. Mm, come on. The, the fellowship. Yeah, yeah. Don't allow yourself yes. to be isolated. Mm -hmm. That's it. And, you don't know, we, we've been in a position in our life and in our marriage to where, you know, there was almost a sense of guilt and shame and condemnation for the things that we, we struggle with. And that's the enemy's ploy to keep you under chains <laughs> because he knows that if you stay mm -hmm. silent and if you don't bring your issues to the light, the light has no opportunity to invade the darkness and light and darkness. Mm -hmm. They don't mix. They're two kingdoms that collide together and mm -hmm. light always wins because where there's light, there's no Amen. darkness. Yeah. And you know, we've in our, in mm -hmm. our, uh, we won't dive super deep, but in our marriage specifically, you know, a lot of lust came in through me and you know, that's why we're such a massive proponent for deliverance because deliverance and what the Lord did through that process and through the Holy Spirit that saved our marriage that saved us individually. And Sierra has a whole testimony of her and of herself 
And if it wasn't for us getting to the point of rock bottom and saying, hey, we've done the isolation, we've done the, oh, I'm just going to go to a counselor, we've done the, oh, the self-help. Frankly, we did everything else but go to the Lord, right? And and allow the Holy Spirit to just take everything from us cool. and use it to his glory. And it was, it was when we reached cool. rock bottom, the Lord said, hey, are you ready yet? Hey, I'm reaching down my hand and I'm pulling you up. Are you going to resist or are you going to allow me to change your life? And I'm so thankful that we allow the Lord to change our life. Because frankly, if it wasn't for that, we would not be here where we're at right now. And I love when Brandon said in the comments, it's so true, don't counsel a demon, cast it out. That's right. And there were so many times that, that we wanted to medicate a demon that we wanted to counsel a demon, that we wanted to tamper a demon, we wanted to call it something else. Oh, that's just yeah. me. Oh, that's what my daddy did. Oh, you know, my, my grandfather was an alcoholic, yeah. all this kind of stuff. And it's it's a lie from the enemy to keep you bound. Right. And it was then the Holy Spirit came mm -hmm. in and said, boom, you're done, out of here, and then yeah. pushing mm -hmm. you into your destiny. So I don't know if you have anything yeah. uh, about that, babe. Any thoughts? Well, I was just going to say, you know, when you talk about that and, and talking about, you know, you don't counsel a demon, cast it out. You could even view today's churches in so many areas as a persecuted church, as a demon daycare. If you think about it, or, or, you know, come the persecutor on. has come, come in and God's people are all living that way because a, they don't know what they don't know. They're cessationists. They're too afraid of it. Or they just, they just haven't had, you know, that, that sweep of, you know, revival come in and it's got to take people like us who have seen too much and who have experienced the change in our own life, our own marriage to not be compromised. And that's the season that we're in right yeah. now is, like, you know, we cannot, we, you can't afford to live a compromised lifestyle and you can't afford to be a part of a compromised church who's only giving half truths and who is just, you know, appeasing the crowd. You know, because you stand up there and you're just mm -hmm. like, God, you're preaching this message of like, you don't have to live this way. God doesn't want you to live this way. We'll see you next Sunday. And it's like, mm -hmm. what are you doing to be able to help the people get free? And so, you know, based on that, on. sorry, one second. Go, go yeah. Um, no, you're good. That's good. It is. Yeah. So. Yeah. And, and another thing too, why she was, why she was speaking that and, we think about persecution and we read the back of the book. We know it's coming, you know, it's promised again. That's, that's not out of a place of fear. It's out of a place of, Hey, let, let's get ready now. Let's be proactive in this process and let's get strengthened now by the power of the Holy spirit. So that whenever true persecution comes, we're armed, locked in step with people closest to us, yeah. with other random believers who will meet maybe in the end times that, mm -hmm. that we are all built up and unity together. We're all one body. We have yeah. different parts of the body that are all equally of importance and we need to be unified. And, and it's, it, you know, whenever true persecution comes, because it will, you know, I would rather go through, you know, the, the two a days now, if you will go through the summer training, go through the weights, go through the winter conditioning, sweat my butt off in August before glory of game days now versus say, Oh, wow. Whenever it actually is here, I better walk in communion with the Lord because you know what? Just bluntly, it might be too yeah. late. You know, and I don't say that out of a place of fear. I say that out of a place of the Lord is inviting you now while he hasn't returned yet to repent, come back to him, mm -hmm. learn from him, glean mm -hmm. from him and walk into authority. And I think of I think of Paul and Silas in Acts chapter 16, mm -hmm. whenever they were in prison. What did they do in the midnight hour? They praised mm -hmm. and they worshiped and they prayed to the living yeah. God. And what did the Lord do? Boom. He flew open the prison doors. Mm -hmm. He busted the shackles mm -hmm. open and they were walking free. And it's like, when are we yeah. going to have a Paul and a Silas moment? Why don't we start Come having on. those moments now in our prayer yeah. closet? Yeah. Whenever the persecution really yeah. isn't that bad, you know, mm -hmm. I'll take, Hey, uh, that Jesus guy, like he never existed. Like a lot of people view that as a, as a trial because in, in some people, and in some cases that might be because you've never, your faith has never been tested, but whenever mm -hmm. the, the real persecution comes down the line, 
I want to be able to be, I want to know in my knower how to get through the persecution and how to get through the trials and how to get through the tribulations. Amen. Amen. And so, man, that, that, that's an incredible thing, too, because uh, we, we, we can see our persecution. And that's what I want to encourage everybody here tonight with. Like if you have been kicked to the side because you were you know, you, you thought differently because you read Mark 15, 16 and it said these signs will follow those that believe. And you begin to seek out that truth. Right. That like you're not alone. Like it, let them call you weird. Yeah. Let them call you crazy yeah. because you believe in going to the hospitals and praying for that person, right? That's on their deathbed that the doctors already said, Hey, family, make plans, check them out. Mm -hmm. Right. I prayed for a dog that had cancer one day. You know, I have my brother on here. Um, that's, you know, I, and I told him, I said, the dog's, the dog's going to be healed because God's trying to win your heart. He wants yeah. to show you how much he loves you. Right. And that they had, they had already told him, the, the dog's bladder, intestines, everything was completely ate up with cancer. If if Rob's on here, he already knows this testimony. But the wow. the, the doc the doctor had already told him, said, bring the dog in, right? And and we're gonna put him down, right? Because it, he won't he can't live any longer, right? We've been we've been literally having to get him to urinate for two weeks now because his insides are falling apart, right? I prayed for the dog, and I'm not special. Let me go ahead and say that out the gate, like. I am not, don't have some special healing. And it's Jesus that heals mm -hmm. people, right. right? It's just me that is allowed to pray. Mm -hmm. and, and so, uh, amen. She just said, my, God healed my dog's back. Amen. And so the dog lived for another year and a half. He took the dog to the vets, was, was about to say his goodbyes. The dog jumps out of the car and begins to urinate and hasn't urinated in wow. two weeks, right? Yeah. On his own. So, so the, the, the dog got healed. Right. And so, you know, God allows us to go through the persecution so that we can become strong in him. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. It's not that God likes to see us getting our teeth kicked yeah. in. It, that, that's not what it's about. Yeah. But the truth is, like when we utilize persecution correctly, mm -hmm. being called crazy, you prayed for a dog. Yes, I sure did. Mm -hmm. Right. Because that's one of God's creatures. Yeah. Right. And my God is still a healer. Right. Yeah. My God is still a, a, a person that he heals just like he saves. Right. Yeah. And so, you know, salvation will always be the greatest gift, but he, he still Amen. prophesies. He still speaks to his people. And so we have to go after that. And, and if you've been persecuted because of these views, right, but uh, just believing the word of God, praise him for it. Yeah. Yeah. Praise him for it because he's going to create something around you for you to have a platform to speak his glory into the earth. Amen. Yeah. That's and it's so good. important that we look at. Yeah, go ahead. No, sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. I, just as you were yeah, speaking to me, we're, we're all going to be a fool for something. So why don't we be a fool for Jesus? You know what I mean? It's like, Amen. at the end of the day, you're, you're going to be a fool for money. You're going to be a fool for greed. You're going to be a fool for a career. Like all of the stuff, it's, it's not going to last. You can't take it to heaven yeah. with you. Mm -hmm. So why not be a fool for King Jesus? You know, mm -hmm. and at the end of the day, here's the deal with believers. Like if we live our life for the Lord, our whole entire life, and all of a sudden we wake up and we realize, hey, it really wasn't true. You know what? We lived a, we lived an upright and a righteous life. Now, I don't believe that. Mm -hmm. But how how can you live life knowing that like if you're an atheist, if if there might be eternal life. And I'm just going to live just like a heathen my whole entire life. And then all of a sudden you stand before God and judgment day. And he said, depart from me. I never knew you. Right. Mm -hmm. And just, I think that we all need to get back to the fear of God. Like in, in, in modern day Christianity, it's just gotten watered down. And it's, mm -hmm. it's a message of the gospel is a message of love. I get that a hundred percent. But at the end of the day, like we have, we have a jaded perspective of what love is love is not accepting mm -hmm. everything that everybody does it's loving them through that and showing these people like hey here's a here's the love of the father the father wants to take all of this garbage all of this junk that you've fallen into and he wants you to lay it down at the foot of the cross so that you can be saved whenever you call on the mighty name of jesus you know and and so I, I i um I, again, I, I think that, I think it's a good thing. I really do. And I think, again, going back to the whole pride thing, um, whenever we drop our pride and whenever we realize, 
hey, you know what? We can't do this life without Jesus. And throughout this time of persecution, throughout this this time of trials and tribulations, uh, ultimately it's just pointing you towards the Lord. That's it. Well, and we've been able to look at it from a perspective of like, you know, when you get those spiritual attacks and it just like you're getting darts left and right. And you also know that you've been like walking in obedience and doing radical things for the Lord and doing things that don't make sense to anybody else. And it's like you count that joy because you every time we'll look at each other and be like something good's coming, breakthroughs coming, you know, so you have to look at it from that perspective, too, of of when you count it all joy. Like it is a good thing that that we're seeing persecution. Yeah. And, you know, we've gotten to the point now to in our life, like because we are again, Josh and Sierra were nothing special. But we know our identity in the Lord and, and we know the calling and the purpose and the plan that he has on our life. And we know that, that because we're walking in such unity, sorry, guys, with the Lord, now you're good. that that all of a sudden, like, we just expect persecution to come. We just expect the trials to come. We expect the fiery darts of the enemy to come. And it's almost like. I don't want to say it's a badge of honor by any means, but it just goes to show us that, you know what, we're actually walking the right way if we're walking in communion with them and we're getting hit with all those attacks. Yeah. So I want to real quick. I want to talk about what it does to other people when they see us walking the correct way through the persecution. So if you're battling with persecution right now, make no bones about it. You are being watched. Real quick, I want to give a shout out to to uh, Dr. Julie Stanley Mack. I love you so much, and thank you, thank you for being here with I us. I love what she said. Uh, yeah, persecution produces power. Produces power. That That's you know, so good. wow. And so uh, I, I just that that was actually the the pastor that married me and my wife, mm-hmm. and we love her so much. I so just yeah. wanted to give a good shout out. But if the, I, I want to just could affirm you tonight that no matter what stage of life that you're in, whether you're in the valley or in the mountain, right? People are watching you, Mm -hmm. right? That's just the truth about it. If you are walking after God, if you're living a a lifestyle after the father, um, you are being watched, Mm -hmm. right? And and so there there is a world around you that is really um, expecting something, and, and, and they put a higher expectation on us because the world wants to see you f- fail. Like you can have the, the lost world. I'm sorry. It's just the way it is. The world wants to see the body of Christ slip up so they can call it out. Yeah. Um, and, and that's just the devil. That's not humans. That's not anything that, that uh, an individual wants to do. It is just the, the, the art of the game of Satan. Right. And, and, and that's exactly right. So Brandon just said our lives are our testimony. Like mm-hmm. we have people watching us. And when we're in that valley, uh, I want to read second ten, uh, ten, uh, three, 10 through 12. You have, however, have followed my teaching. So, of course, we know that that Paul uh, had a had a spiritual son named Timothy that was starting up a church. And um, so he, he tells him, you followed my teaching, you followed my conduct. My aim of life, my faith, my patience, my love, my steadfastness, right? And then he says, my persecutions Mm. and sufferings that happened to me in Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, which uh, persecution I endured, yet from them all the Lord rescued me. There's so much in that that I I can't dive in. But he said, indeed, all who desire to live godly, a godly life in Jesus Christ will be persecuted. It didn't say he might. It didn't say that it may come. He He says blatantly like, so that encourages the people around you. Like the gospel Mm -hmm. of Jesus Christ spread like wildfire in the early church because they took persecution. We all know, you know, Paul was Saul who persecuted the church, right? And, and, and by that persecution, these individuals were able to pray for those that persecuted them. Mm-hmm. They were to, 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 to love the people that were their enemies, right? And through that persecution, because they handled it right, it expanded the kingdom yeah. on earth. It, it, it took the gospel of Jesus Christ further and further and further because people want to know the hope that you have when you suffer well. Yeah. So through the persecutions, I want to know that you know that it's not just the strength I have. Like 
that's what pushes me to the closet in the bad times, in the tough times. Like, so when you're going through something, brother, sister, like you have to get with God because somebody else's faith depends on it. Yeah. Even talking about Sister Julie here, she used to tell us, like, if you don't get saved for any other reason, get saved for your your kids. Yep. Yep. Your kids yep. are watching that way you're walking through that person. Yep. Like you have your neighbor watching you walk how you how you how you handle yourself through the persecution. Mm -hmm. Like when the world's coming to get you, how do you react? Mm -hmm. Right? Because an orange squeezes orange juice. Mm -hmm. Amen. An apple, you'll get apple juice. Yep. But a Christian should squeeze out Christ. That's right. right? And so that persecution, it reveals what's on the inside of mm -hmm. us. And so that that's really what translates to the rest of the world. Like, our, what is our outward showing when we're yeah. walking in this? I'm not belittling anything. I'm, I'm not I'm not taking any credit uh, or, 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 or degrading anything that you've had to walk through. If it's been, mm -hmm. you know, people, you know, if, whether it's been people talking about you, whether it's been you in court, whether it's been an all out war from your family and they've been dragging you through the mud. Oh, look at you, Mr. Holy Roller. Like I've been called that. Like yeah. I've been, Oh, you think you're better than us now. Right. Cause I came out of the drug life. Right. So my, the, the people I was coming out, Oh, you just don't come around no more. You just think you're better. Yeah, I, I do. I think I'm not better than you. I think I'm better than that. Like That's God it. created me for a purpose. Yeah. Like I have a purpose on my life. Yeah. And now as I've walked that for years and years and years and years, I showed an example through the persecutions of the life of what Jesus can mm -hmm. do, what kind of strength that he can give you in those dark and hard times. Right. So, man, I, I just want to encourage people tonight. Mm -hmm. Like if you're walking through something like people are watching you, yeah. your kids are watching you. Your co-workers are watching you yeah. like they want to see how you handle it, because just like Timothy was watching Paul, mm -hmm. like in his life, he said, I'm going to watch how this handles because this is something bigger than him because I see what he's going through. Mm -hmm. I had a brother of mine tell him tell me one time he said, I've watched you go through some stuff that would have taken out people. <laughs> I've watched the people dismantle your character like and you didn't budge. You didn't come back at them. You didn't do all this stuff. But they, they didn't have a ground to stand on. Right. But they were talking mad, crazy stuff about you and you knew it and you kept moving forward. Yeah. Again, that's that. that I'm, I'm not saying I was you know knife to the throat. But so what does that do? So even in the talking about so we're going to get into levels right now. So just even into the t talking about should we consider that persecutions? I would say absolutely. Yes, because it's these small things that lead us up to be able to endure the big things. Mm -hmm. Right. So, um, you know, uh, the number one level, like the lowest level that we can we, we can encounter are, are the accusations. Right. And I, I, I want to the, the reason this is the lowest level of persecution is because persecution and accusation is the highest level of warfare from the enemy. I'm going to say that again. Persecution and accusation is the highest level. It is the last ditch effort that Satan has That's against you. Right. Because why? Because we have taken ground from him mm -hmm. and we begin to push him back. He no longer has the influence mm -hmm. in our life to touch us. Right. We've learned how to rebuke him. Mm -hmm. We've learned how to kick him out of our house. We've learned how to kick him out of our health. Mm -hmm. We've learned how to kick him out of our finances. We've learned how to kick him out of our marriage. Yeah. We, like we have understood spiritual warfare and began to take, take the ground from yes. Satan himself. Right. So all he can do now is come back against the fence and hurl accusations. Yeah. Right. How does he do that? Right. If God wants to bless you, he'll send an individual. If Satan wants to hurt you, he'll send an individual. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times that comes through individuals. Right. right. And so that's where it gets really hard because we can't fight that person. We can't come against that person because it's the influence mm -hmm. of Satan, not that individual. Yeah. yeah. So he begins to use people to hurl the accusations at us. Mm -hmm. Right. To try to tear us down, to demoralize again, to de demoralize or isolate us. Yeah. Right. So as we begin to take the ground, he throws the accusations. Mm -hmm. The end game is always to still kill and destroy. Not yeah. maybe not just your life, but I'm telling you that there's people that has brought accusations and persecutions into my own life. And that's why I don't want to belittle accusations. Like if you're being accused of stuff you didn't do and, and, and you're having all these stuff, uh, this stuff come against you. I don't want to belittle that because Satan will use those things. Mm -hmm. Hey, Miss Sarah, happy Father's Day. Sarah, 
um, Satan will use these things against you in your own life to try to demoralize you, to still kill and destroy God's purpose in your life. Mm-hmm. Yep. Not maybe he ain't trying to take your breath. Right. Right. There, there is the the level that you get to that now it's it's just all out war, right? And he just wants you dead. Yep. But if he can use accusations and persecutions to just come against your purpose Mm -hmm. as a man or woman of God, then he succeeded. Because if we begin to compromise, Mm -hmm. he will steal our purpose, right? So the first level is the talking about, it's the backbiting, it's the gossip about us. Mm. It's about, and we've all had this done, whether, whether good, you know, when I was in the game, right, I I had this done to me. So I'm not saying that this is, you know, this is just on, (laughs) on this stage, right? Um, uh, but, and, and, and back then I earned it, <laughs> so, so, but, but I'm talking about when you're living, like Jesus said, when you're persecuted for my namesake, that's the key here. When we're, when, when, when we're persecuted for his namesake, amen. Commitment and, without and Jack, one amen. thing too, that while you were talking, it, it just dried my spirit, you know, whenever it, what the enemy can't take and what he can't have, he's going to distract. And what accusations and insults do, they distract you from your purpose and your destiny. And what you Mm -hmm. said earlier, if if the enemy can can distract you, if he can derail you, if he can throw you off guard, if he could throw your spirit off kilter to say, ah, I'll probably just throw in the towel. He knows that he has you because an idle man is not a useful man. Whenever you have purpose and you have a destiny and you have Mm -hmm. a calling, you're going to run through walls to fulfill that calling. But what the enemy wants is he wants to distract. And oftentimes Mm -hmm. that comes in the form of, it can come in the form of good things too. It can come in the form of, you know, family events, scheduling dinners, your stomach. Because a lot of times we bow to the God of our stomach. We need to fast. That's, that's another topic for another night, but just things of that nature. It doesn't always have to look like, um, you know, the, the devil's just going to drop a nuclear bomb in your lap. No, a lot of times it could just be just things of the mundane life that could sneak yeah. in. And the enemy knows that there's a teeny tiny sliver of a crack in the door that all of a sudden, whenever he calls back to his cronies, they can just bust the door wide open. And, you know, he knows he has. Yeah. And that's why it's so crucial to proactively put on the full armor of God every day, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the the belt of truth, wielding the sword of the spirit. It is written. It is written. Mm -hmm. It is written. Whenever Jesus got tempted and tested before he got lost into his ministry, that's another thing. A lot of times, oh God, (laughs) a lot of times, whenever you are, are about to launch into what the Lord truly has for you, There will be, without a shadow of a doubt, probably one of the biggest attacks of your whole entire life. And over the last couple of months, we've walked into a lot of those attacks, into a lot of those different things. And the season that I believe that the Lord has Mm -hmm. for us, he's he's propelling us into something different, into something more. But if we didn't go through that season or or man or woman of God, if you didn't go through that season, how could the Lord trust you for what's next? If you haven't, if you haven't learned If you haven't had the lessons, you can't just read it out of a self-help book. You can read it in the scripture, but it's not until the scripture becomes fully alive in you through your circumstances to wherever you say, hey, I've been there. How do you how do you overcome the enemy by the blood of the lamb and the word of your testimony? How do you have a testimony? You go through Mm -hmm. junk. You go through persecutions. You go through trial and you say, my God did it for me. My God's going to do it for me then. Whenever I went through this, my yeah. God showed up. And you go back to what you said earlier mm-hmm. about how people view you going through persecution and trials. And a lot of times, whenever we go through that and we wear it as a, almost like a, not a badge of honor, like the enemy's attacking me, but hey, look what the Lord did for me through this. I want to share that with you, brother mm-hmm. or sister in Christ, so that whenever you go through the same thing, whenever the enemy attacks your marriage, Whenever the enemy attacks your mind, whenever you're away from your wife and he, he starts to infiltrate your mind with lustful thoughts. No, here's what I did. I rebuked it. I said, it is written. I have the mind of Christ. I'm not, I'm, I'm in this world. I'm not of this world. I'm seated in heavenly places. I'm co-heirs of Christ Jesus. I am the head, not the tail. And so what, what the Lord wants us to do is to walk with him hand in hand through that process so that we yeah. can then show other people 
how to walk through it. So I just felt yeah. that drop in my spirit while you were talking. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And, 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 and one thing that kind of brings up my next point before I go to the, uh, the, the, the next level um, is that the greater glory always shows up on the backside of the persecution. Like Jesus was glorious in his body. Right. But now he sits at the right hand of the father in all glory because he carried the cross, because Amen. he was obedient in the garden, because he took the stripes, because he took the nails, because he took the crown. Mm -hmm. And through that persecution in the physical realm, like it, the, the, the Bible tells us that he had the opportunity to say no. Mm -hmm. But because he was obedient to the father, now he sits upon all glory mm -hmm. like he the, 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 the next level of glory sits at the backside of your persecution. Come on, somebody. Come you on. got to receive that in your spirit. Like you, your next level of glory is dependent on the persecution. But even uh, Sister Julie used to even tell us, I'm going to use one from you. And she said, if you don't go, if you don't pass the test, you're back around the mountain. Like we have we have to understand like we this is not a, a just happenstance that we're going through something. Right. Yes. It's not just a happenstance that the enemy is fighting us. It's because there's great value within us. And God is pure. You know how much dirt is removed to get an ounce of gold? Mm -hmm. Come on. Wow. You, you know how much that digging they have to do, mm -hmm. how much purification has to happen. Like God's digging the dirt out. To get that purification, he's getting that gold. And that's why all things work together for the good of those that love God. Amen. Come on, yeah. somebody. Like we have to understand, like he's digging. He's yeah. digging. And even through those persecutions, like he's wagging, he's just he's laughing at the enemy. Yeah. And so he's given us the strength to laugh too. Like uh oh, I can't remember the guy's name. Uh Kenneth Hagan. He used to say, Laugh at the devil. Yeah. Laugh at the devil. Yeah. Laugh at the devil. I've got a brother that, that went through uh, Kenneth Hagin schools and he said that's what he used to do all the time. Like he would be going through something and he would just laugh. He would just laugh at the en enemy because God's taken us to the next glory. Mm -hmm. But it's coming through your persecution yeah. and trials. So level two, um, law persecution. We know that 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 uh, the, in the book of Acts, the, the disciples were brought into the law category, right? They, they went and stood them up in front of the council, in front of the governors. Even Jesus himself had to go in front of the governors, right? And so that's another realm of persecution um, that, that we face. Uh, and that's normally next level. Again, all persecution starts at accusations. There's an accuser. The, the, Satan is called an accuser mm -hmm. in the courts of heaven, right? Jesus is our lawyer. He's mm -hmm. our advocate. Yeah. He stands and goes, no, 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 no. They're under my blood. That's that's right. the only way yeah. we're rescued out of hell. Right. And so there's an accuser. And th all this stuff starts at ground level. And, and so this is just different avenues and, and levels of it. So law for persecution, physical persecution. Now, we, 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 we saw recently in the American uh, theater, if you will, right, that there were individuals that were attacking people physically punching people in the face for showing up and, and glorifying God, right? Mm -hmm. And we can call them Antifa because that's who they were, right. right? The BLM movement, all this other stuff, it got very violent, right? Because people were out trying to even speak their own voice and say that, hey, we're against abortion. Mm -hmm. we're, we're against, you know, X, Y, Z. I, mm -hmm. you know, I don't want to get into a bunch of politics here, but the biblical stances were being taken, right? And things got physical. Mm -hmm. So that's another level of persecution, even a mm -hmm. higher form. Right. Is when you're actually and it's all meant to make you compromise. It's all meant to make you buckle. Mm -hmm. It's all meant to incite fear. We watched a video where this guy was baptizing someone and, oh, yeah. and, and the people were just throwing things at them and cursing at them and all. And this is in America, guys. Mm -hmm. Like we have to be prepared. Why are we talking about this tonight is because we can't sit on our duffs anymore because we don't live in the America of 50 years ago. Yeah. Right. The Bible, the body of Jesus Christ is being attacked. Mm -hmm. And if we don't talk about these things, if we don't bring these things to light, then how will we be prepared to stand mm -hmm. in the days that are coming? Mm -hmm. Right. And the last one is mortal persecution. So when it's actually going to cost you your life, that is yep. the highest level wow. Like that Satan is trying to take the breath out of your dirt body. But I can't die <laughs> like you can't yeah. kill me. I'm just on to the next mm -hmm. glory. That's it. Right. So and that, that has to be our understanding. Like we have to. Why? Because at the, at the in the book of Revelation, like the true body of Christ will mm -hmm. face death. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. Why are we talking about this family? Why are we, why would we be bringing this? It's not to incite fear, but if we can't handle people talking about us, then when we go to have to get the mark of the beast yeah. to feed our family, mm -hmm. we will buckle under wow. the pressure. Yep. That's it. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to say that again. Like if we can't handle the person in the cubicle calling us crazy because we love Jesus, right? How will you ever be able to watch your kids hungry mm -hmm. and not take the mark? and burn an eternal fire, mm. right? We have to prepare ourselves. Yeah. The bride, God is coming back for a spotless bride, mm -hmm. right? And, and, and you know, the book of Malachi talks about my people are destroyed for the mm -hmm. lack of knowledge. I'll tell you what was the lack of knowledge. That whole thing is being written to the priest because the priest were not, you go to Malachi 2 and it says to the priest, right? The priests are now corrupted and they're chasing money and they're compromised themselves and they're not preaching the word of God. And it's destroying the people because the priests refuse to talk about truth. Wow. The truth is persecution is coming. This is not to incite you and make you fearful. It's to make you strong. It's yeah. to make you get to the only rock who is Jesus right. Christ. Mm -hmm. It's to make you understand that all these things of this world are passing yeah. away and one day will be rolled up like a scroll. Yeah. And the only thing that is not going anywhere is God himself. Mm -hmm. Right. So we have we have to we have to speak on these things yeah. because one day, whether we like if we believe the word of God, one day there will be moral, mortal persecution that stands in our front. That's just the reality. Yeah, we have some happening. We do. Overseas. We do. Yep. And it, with, with that, Josh, I want to share. Amen. To live as Christ and die as gain. Amen, yeah. bro. Yeah. And, and like I, I, I fear sometimes for, for my brothers and sisters that I see in the church because I'm like, man, if we can't even lift our hands to praise our God, what is it going to look like? What is it going to look like when the army is standing with a gun to your head and saying, take the mark or die, renounce Christ or die? Or better yet, what, right? what's going to happen when they decide to take the Bibles away from us and you're not, you haven't been spending no time in the Bible. That's it. You know? Come on. Yeah. <laughs> You're not that's it right there. That, that's so true. Yeah. Yep. That's that that's so God true. Fear in my life. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. And that's that's what actually the, the pastor of the church we went to this morning is Lord, may may the the fear of you increase. A healthy fear, a reverent fear. Yes. May we come unto the mm -hmm. throne in reverence. I feel like mm -hmm. us today in modern day Christianity, there's been a lack of reverence. Because although, yes, the Lord is our friend, he promises to be with us, he's also our father first. And for, for us earthly fathers, if we, if we can't discipline our children, there's no respect. Like, we're not buddies with our kids, right? And I feel like there's a lack of reverence in it. Also, whenever you were talking, it, it, it led me to think of the, the story of the ten virgins. And I know that my, I want my lamp to be full. So that whenever the trumpet blows and whenever Jesus comes back on that white horse, I want my lamp to be full with oil. I don't want to be the virgin that comes to the to the other virgin that says, hey, can I please borrow some oil? Because my lamp, my lamp isn't full. Right. And also too, regarding the truth, the truth will set you free. And in times to where Amen. chaos and confusion and gender confusion and and we're in the month of June. We're in Pride Month. It's just a spirit of chaos. Mm -hmm. It's a spirit of confusion. The Lord wants to invite us into a place of truth. Hey, hey, son. Hey, daughter. Let me share with you my truth. Let me share with you how I created you. I knitted you together in your mother's womb. I, I know every single hair upon your head. You're more valuable to me than all of the amounts of silver and gold and diamond and rubies in this whole entire world. And I believe that that truth is necessary in this season. And also, too, talking about the truth, that also invites us into freedom. Because where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There is liberty. And if we stay bound with a spirit of fear, because that is a spirit, it says it in Scripture. Come on. <laughs> For the Lord did not give you a what? Spirit of fear, but spirit. of power, of love, Amen. and a sound mind. And if we don't have a Come sound on. mind, what are we going to fall into? We're going to fall into double-mindedness. Right. Whenever we fall into double-mindedness, we're like a sheep blowing in the wind. 
oh my gosh, I love mm -hmm. Jesus today, but the next day whenever persecution comes, oh my gosh, is Jesus even real? Did God even create the world? Did Noah even, you know, did he even build the ark? All these types of things. Like whenever we're double-minded, it just, it, it blows us around. And, and whenever true persecution comes, because again, it will, we have mm -hmm. to stay narrow-minded. We have to stay single-minded and we have to focus on the Lord Jesus Christ. Because at the end of the day, he even says that we are called to put aside everything else in this world. That that um, husbands and wives will turn away from each other because we have to prioritize our relationship with the Lord. And a lot of times today, just in modern day life, uh, we get bogged down with the ball teams. We get bogged down with the dinner dates. We get bogged down with a lot of stuff, which is still good stuff. But I also feel like the Lord wants us to realign our priorities and put our focus back on the Lord so that whenever all Amen. this stuff happens, we're going to stand firm on the rock. We're not going to build our house on the sinking sand. We're going to build it on the rock and lay a solid yeah. foundation so that whenever the hurricane winds come, we're prepared, mm -hmm. we're built, we're solid. Yeah. yeah, and I love that because it's when it comes, not if it comes, right? Yeah. It's it, it's a, it's a win. It's it. We win at the end yeah. of the day. But it. That, it doesn't mean that things. Jesus tells us that we can't love the things of the world and God, right? He tells us that you're single-eyed, like you're 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 going to have your eye focused on one thing, and yeah. in the context, he's actually talking about money. Right. He's talking about he says you 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 cannot serve Baal and God. Yeah. Right. That you have a single eye and that your eye will have one thing coming in it. And if the darkness, how great is that darkness? Yeah. But if the light, how great is that light? Right. And so that's so that's so good. Um, and so just to bring this over into practicality, what you when persecution comes, it really uh, shows you what's in you, because in mm -hmm. Acts 715 is one of my uh, favorite scriptures. Stephen was falsely accused. His face glowed as though he had a face of an angel. And it just shows you that what comes out of you when you're being falsely accused. Wow. What manifests in your life when you're being falsely accused. That is so good. <laughs> That's so good. Y'all, if y'all didn't catch that, like, like Stephen was being mm -hmm. accused. Mm -hmm. He was being falsely accused and his face shone like an angel. Mm -hmm. Man. Like holy. Spirit. Yeah. Come on. That's so good. Yeah. Goodness gracious. Um, that 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 is that's good scripture right there. Wow. Um, man, I hope my face can shine yes. like an angel. Right, man. Oh, man, goodness gracious. If that doesn't bring the fear of God to our mm -hmm. lives, like it, 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 I don't all. I, I always say I don't bring messages for anybody else. Like I I like them to impact me, mm -hmm. right? And 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 praise God if it does affect someone else. But that was good. Um, so awesome. Awesome. So with some practical things, um, I want to talk about real quick uh, and I'm just going to let you run with these. But uh, what, what are some practical ways that inwardly I'm not talking about outward expression. I'm talking about inward expression. When we suffer um, things for the kingdom of heaven, I'm not talking about just suffering because we screwed up. I'm not talking about dealing with stuff because you're you know all kind of getting crazy out there with no boundaries on your life. Put boundaries on your life. That's how you need to deal with that. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if you're if you're dealing with, with 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 stuff in your life because you're you know going to the bar, hey, stop going to the bar, right? Yeah. If you're if, if your 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 wife wants to kick you out because you're a drunk, right? Stop drinking, That's right? It. And repent and turn back to your wife as, as second in your life, right? Under Christ. But I'm not talking about those things. I'm talking about when we're reviled. And persecuted for the name of Jesus Christ. What are some inward ways that we can handle those? What are some practical things? Do you want to want to take that? Thing? Yeah, you know, our first reaction sometimes is like to be in our flesh when those things come about to automatically start to inwardly, mentally freak out a little bit, like um, you know, wear the heaviness and and to be like, why is this happening? And oh my goodness, and you know. Uh, Galatians 6, 9, it tells us not to get weary in well-doing. And so we have to, we have to remember um, that we, you know, we're, we're created to be able to take authority over these things. And, you know, again, that, that goes back to um, 2 Corinthians 10, 5, 
you know, where he talks about taking every thought captive and making it come into mm -hmm. obedience with Christ. And so we know that things are going to happen, but we have the authority to make it come into, I'm sorry, I'm going to take him yeah. We, we have the authority to make it come into obedience with Christ. You know what I mean? And so, and that's why it's so important to know your authority in Jesus is because when the accuser comes, when the persecution comes, and when you have that mental battle, um, you have mm -hmm. to be able to fight the enemy. And, and again, knowing yeah. scripture in that moment, using scripture mm -hmm. to fight that battle, you know? And so um, 1 Corinthians 2.16 says that we have the mind of Christ. And oftentimes mm -hmm. I'll wake up in the morning and anoint myself and I will proclaim, I have the mind of Christ. I take every thought captive. Mm -hmm. Now that's not of God in Jesus name. And I proclaim victory over my mind today because, you know, the enemy is the one that whispers to your mind, especially, you know, in the, in the, we we're so, we get caught up in our flesh. I play out scenarios like crazy before they even, I'm my mind is a movie that is way worse than what is actually perceived to be. And if you don't take it captive, it's going to, it's going to build and it's going to build and it's going to be, and then you blow up and we're all guilty of that. You know That's what it. I mean? Yep. So those right. are just some go ahead. I'm glad, I'm glad you just said that because that's a, that's honestly what she was talking about was the mental. She said she called it mental persecution. Yeah. And sometimes yeah. we do it to ourselves. You know, fear is taken in the opposite direction. Like fear in itself is us inventing something that hasn't happened yet. And we've all done it. I mean, we've we, exactly what you just said. Yeah. Um, you just spoke to a, every last one of us on here mm -hmm. is because we've all been there. We've all invented a reason to fear, mm -hmm. right? And, and and God wants us to have faith. But we're, we're, we're believing in something, but in the opposite direction. Yeah. And then you were talking about um, the mental games yeah. that, that get played with us. Mm -hmm. And yeah. sometimes the worst persecution can be in in between our ears. Yeah. Yeah. Right? That's yeah. It. And a lot of times too, is it we like to label it persecution, but I like what Brandon said too. It's just it's the consequences of our own stupidity. It's the consequences of our own behavior. You know, a lot of times we bring a lot of situations on ourselves. And it's just like, you know, mm -hmm. if you're uh, if you struggle with pornography or if you struggle with lust, you know what? Probably put your phone down and put it across the room at night so you don't just get tempted to, you know, pull it up and look at things you shouldn't. Yeah. You know, just simple things like yeah. that. And a lot of times, any times yeah. with, with habits, it takes a lot longer to break the habits than it actually does to get the habits. Right. So it's just, it's, yeah, it's just physically retraining our mind. And I think too, uh, some more practical steps too, for me and how I've gone and how I've gotten through, uh, tribulations and trials is, is knowing Jesus was persecuted at the highest level. And I mean, for crying out loud, Jesus, who was perfect, he was a man who knew no sin to become sin for us, to stand in the gap for us. And he he literally took 39 beatings. He had to carry his own cross with a crown of thorns. And he had to die one of the most gruesome deaths ever recorded in mankind. And it's like, I know that I'm sure I could speak for every single person on this live right now. Nobody has ever experienced that level of persecution ever. And I pray to the Lord Jesus that that never, ever happens in Jesus name. But to me, my mind always goes to the extreme. And if, if I think to myself, if that same power that rose Jesus from the grave lives inside of me, and I know that the Lord Jesus, he literally, he, he withstood that. Now, granted, he had the biggest mission and biggest calling ever, but he went through that. And I have to remind myself of that. He's never going to leave us. He's never going to forsake us. And right. if we're if we're here on Earth now, we were born for such a time as this. So for the trials, for the tribulations, for the testing of our faith, for the, the fiery darts of the enemy, what the enemy tries to use for evil, the Lord is turning all of that for good. And amongst all of the times in our life that the enemy has tried to take us out, the Lord was ultimately glorified through that. And how did Jesus handle extreme persecution? He blessed his enemies. He loved his enemies. You know, he turned the other mm -hmm. cheek. Now, here's the deal. If I'm getting lashed, if I'm getting spit on, if I'm getting kicked, if I'm getting punched, it would be very hard to turn the other cheek, right? But you want to talk about modeling and, and how you work through persecution. That's it. 
And honestly, another thing is knowing what happens at the end of the book, man. Knowing, 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 uh, knowing what's coming, and knowing that we uh, wrestle and we fight against the defeated foe. So we need to treat him like he's defeated. We don't need to treat him like he has dominion and power Come and on. authority in our life. Because we're, if we are a true, bought and paid for, born again, Bible believing, Holy Spirit filled Christian, the enemy has no room to infiltrate mm -hmm. our life. Because whenever we speak Psalm 91 over our life every single day, the enemy cannot come into our dwelling, right? So I think about that too. I think about mm -hmm. how, yeah. how the, the devil is just roaring around like a roaring lion, but ultimately he's, he's, he's a toothless lion and he likes to spit accusations. So th those are just a few things that, that, that I immediately go to. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love the old saying. So, you know, in the South, we got about 5 million old sayings and th there's an old saying that says, uh, chew, chew up the meat and spit out the bone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like we have to get to a place in our life that even when things are hard, that we can control our emotions. Like th this is a huge inwardly thing is we love to react yeah. and, and, and we love to, 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 to lash. Right. And so if I could give anyone on here the biggest advice about how to respond properly, it would be first to get in your word, to understand the word of God, because through understanding the word of God, you'll understand the character of God. And God never acts, you know, everything's not recorded this in the Bible, right? That, that it's twice in the Bible. I have, I, I struggle with sensationalists that says that miracles don't happen because if they did, then that would mean that everything wasn't recorded in the Bible. No, it, there's twice. There's in the book of Revelation and then in the book of John that it says that, that all things aren't concealed in these pages because if it would, the books would fill the world, right? And then in Revelation, again, the, uh, you know, John, the revelator is actually looking at, something happened and, and, and he goes to write it down and the angel goes, nope, don't write that down because that's concealed for a later time. Mm -hmm. So the Bible says twice <laughs> that the Bible doesn't contain everything. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, but if you, if we can understand that God doesn't react any type of way out of the Bible. So the Holy scripture is holy. It's yeah. perfect. And, and, but it, 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 it it gives the perfect character of the father himself. So when we understand the word of God, when we get it on the inside of us, Jesus even had to fight the enemy mm -hmm. with the word of God. Yeah. But we'll understand that he'll never leave us nor forsake us. Right. He'll understand that even in the persecution, he's he's, he's closer. He sticks closer than a than, than a brother. Right. He's with us. And so as we as we learn God and who he is and how perfect he is, that he'll never leave you. Mm -hmm. You'll learn how to not react out of your emotions. You'll learn to react out of that word and those promises that are always true. Right. And then and only then is when we can back off of the situation and go, OK, God, what are you trying to teach me? Yeah. Let let me allow me to, to have the wisdom. James 1, 5, if any man lacks wisdom. Right. Let him ask of God who gives liberally and without reproach. Right. So how would how are you? What are you teaching me? Where are you trying to make me wiser in my own life? And you begin to chew up the meat and then you can spit out the bones of offense. Then then you can begin to walk in a manner of spitting out the bones and not allowing the enemy to come in through the trauma of that situation and not not allowing offense and not allowing the lust of perversion or or any of these things that are trying to beat us up during the persecution, because the reality is, is they are mm -hmm. right. The reality is the compromise is trying to create a crack door in your life as mm -hmm. we're walking through these persecutions. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And so when we begin to walk these things and we can control our emotions and control how we're thinking and how we're responding and, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, I don't do that all the time. Well, yeah. and God will send me back through another test before he puts the next level of glory on me. Right. That's just the truth. And so as, as we walk these things, we can begin to chew up the meat and yeah. spit out the bone. Mm -hmm. Right. That's a, it, it's so good. So uh, and also Jesus, um, Jesus also uh, remained silent during wow. his uh, his walk to the cross. You know, yeah. true. He he actually showed true meekness because meekness means power under control. But uh, in other words, it means that um, you have the power to destroy somebody, but you instead you remain silent. Woo. You can take them out, but you instead you rather just remain silent. That's so good. So, and he, that's, he showed true meekness. That's 
That's a bomb yeah. right there. That's so that's good. And and that oftentimes, really like that's so good. That's that was so good. All yeah. right. You know, and, and that's, <laughs> that's so true, Pamela, too. Like um going back to what I said earlier, is you know, that was the most highest level of persecution ever. And he didn't even say a word. And yeah. you know, also wow. too, through that process, you know, on you know, throughout the persecution. He said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken mm -hmm. me? You know, and, and I think that that shows the level of humanity that Jesus carried. Yeah. And throughout mm -hmm. the stuff that we go through, I don't want the enemy to, to, to bring us into a place of, well, if we are believers in Jesus and if we go through persecution, man, we just have to be joyful and we just have to wear a smile the whole entire mm -hmm. time. Like, no, we're, we're humans. Like if Jesus mm -hmm. said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I think it's okay to, to frankly be a little upset or to be angry mm -hmm. or to just, just have a, a vast array of emotions because emotions are good and the enemy wants mm -hmm. to suppress your emotions so that ultimately you'll, you'll then accuse God of doing the things that the enemy is actually doing. And mm -hmm. I think that that's a, I think that that's a lie. And yeah. I just, um, the, the meekness piece that absolutely blows me away because he could have called down legions of angels to take him off the cross, but yet yeah. he remained humble and he remained mm -hmm. human and he knew the assignment. And I think a lot of times is when the enemy, whenever he comes at you the hardest, he's going to come after your assignment. And yeah. the Lord Jesus knew his assignment. He knew that as soon as he took his last breath, humanity was forever changed. And mm -hmm. it was because as soon as he bowed his head and he said, it is finished. We all know the story. The temples, the, the curtain of the temple was ripped open and now we're able to receive eternal life throughout through Jesus. And, you know, to me, that just, that's the highest level of persecution. But I also know that mm -hmm. if the Lord Jesus can endure that, and if he can tame his tongue and if he can control that little utter in his mouth, you know what? We probably better do the same thing too, because you know it says in Proverbs that you know the 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 power of the tongue is is ultimately life and death. And I want to speak mm -hmm. life, and I don't want to speak yeah. death, because a lot of times yeah. if we speak death, that then opens the door to the enemy, to his demons, and a lot of times that can that can add to a, a, another layer of of uh, persecution and complexity as well. Yeah, I I, I love what uh what Brandon just posted to our. I think it was Brandon. He just posted, take this cup from me. Again, Jesus shows, Jesus shows his, his own will in his flesh. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so that, that, that's, that's the last thing that I want to talk about is uh, outwardly. So, so this is the big one because this is what people see, uh, regardless of what's going on in between our, our ears. Right. And in our heart um, outwardly, how do we handle it? Because from the, from, from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Mm -hmm. And so, what we're dealing with ultimately in the closet will manifest in the natural, right? How, how we're handling the persecution uh, on the inside. And before we get off of here, I want you to tell that, that testimony of, of the, of the gentleman in China too, because that, that's some real persecution and because we need to be able to pray for our brothers and sisters across right. the seas. But while we're still talking about this, like here, right here, we, let, let, let's talk about the outward, outward way that we deal with persecution um e even in our american levels um because the reality is again uh there's people's salvation that depends on it whether we like that or not uh if you didn't want people you know it's kind of like the, the the entertainer that says well I, I i don't want kids following me well you take the check right <laughs> like you get to live under the blessings of the father understand that you're going to have the world looking at you to see what a Christian should mm -hmm. look like. Like if you did, you know, it just take hell's fire. If you didn't, if you didn't want that as the, as the, as the manifestation of our Christian walk, right. That, you know, Jesus was very clear, right. The world will hate you because they hated me first. Right. It, it, there's, there's, a, there's a clear line drawn to people will watch you. And so as we walk these things and in our persecution and all that other stuff, like somebody's life may depend on how you were handling that problem. Yeah. Um, Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Mm -hmm. Follow Christ. Amen, Brother Daryl. Good to see you, Brother Daryl, too. Um, love you, man. Uh, happy Father's Day. 
but that, that there's just a lot of truth to that. And Zach, I saw Zach on here earlier. We was in a room together in deliverance uh, um, on, on a Zoom call not long ago. So I want to give a shout out to my brother. But um, outwardly, uh, and, and, and there's, there's a huge, <laughs> there, of course, love. And love is blank, 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 blank. So I'll let you go into all that. Um, hey, Miss Kim, good to see you. Uh, I, I just want to talk about the outward show of persecution. Cause again, we just had this conversation, like we're people, like we don't handle everything all the time perfectly, yeah. but there, but there has to be an accountability for the glory that we carry. We have this treasure in earthen vessels because Jesus Christ died to cleanse us and to fill us with his Holy spirit. So there has to be an Amen. accountability side of that. So even though sometimes we fall, like as brothers and sisters in Christ, right? We, we have to, we have to hold each other accountable mm -hmm. and be able to have these conversations. So um, I'll let you take that out, out, outwardly walk through persecution. That's so good. Um, I know, I know Sierra's got a really good example here. So I know, and, and, and sorry for the, the baby the whole time. Thanks for sticking with us guys. We, we don't have a babysitter right. or anything. So I think he's, he's this uh, family. This is family. <laughs> yeah. This is what we do, bro. It's all yeah. good. That's it, man. All right, so go ahead. Babe. Yeah. So I think honestly, outwardly having radical faith. Um, if you look at Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, when they were, when they, you know, told King Nebuchadnezzar, like, we're not going to worship your idols. We believe that God will deliver us in the fiery furnace. But even if he doesn't, we're still not going to bow down to any other God. And so you have to have that faith mentality of even if not, he is still good, you know? And so when you're going through the accusations, when you're going through the, the mental persecution, when you're going through the, you know, we have to, we have to know the back of the book says what it says. And here on earth, sometimes things don't happen and we can't question, you know, God, why didn't you do this? But it's just like Jesus on the, and before he, before he was hung on the cross, you know, why have you forsaken me? Take this cup from me if it is your will. Right. And God didn't do it, but he had to allow that to happen. And sometimes in life, he has to allow these things to happen in order for us to persevere through it. You know, that persevering mm -hmm. faith is exactly what's going to happen. It We walk by faith, not by sight. Right. And so it cannot be dependent on circumstance. It, it has to be dependent on God is good no matter what. That's it. You know, so I just mm -hmm. thought that was it just spoke to me today mm -hmm. from. No, that's, that's so good. And, you know, if we can believe God is good in the good times, we have to believe that he's good in the bad times because the love of the Lord and, and our God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He's not changing when your scenarios are less than ideal. Right. He's not changing whenever your life is sunshine and roses. He's the same God mm -hmm. yesterday, today, and forevermore. And can you imagine mm -hmm. what Daniel went through? Whenever Daniel basically had the keys of the kingdom and then all of a sudden, you know, the decree was put into, into place that Daniel and whoever else, you know, at that time could not pray to anybody else. They can't pray at all. And then Daniel saying, hey, um, that's immoral against my faith. It's going against the very foundation, the very bedrock of what I believe. I'm going to stand firm and I'm going to pray three times a day in that window. And he did it anyways, mm -hmm. knowing that he was probably going to face that extreme persecution. Yeah. But what did he do? He maintained the level of faith that said, my God got me to this level. I know that he's going to see me through. All of a sudden, right. thrown down into the lion's den, the lion's mouths are closed. And I, I can just imagine that, you know, if I was Daniel getting thrown down into the lion's den, I'd probably scream and cry like a little baby. You know what I mean? Like, can, can you imagine that going through that, that process? But knowing that God showed up, shut the mouths of the lions, and can you imagine the testimony that came through that process? Same with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Uh, the Israelites in Egypt, what, what Moses did whenever he, he killed his brother, went, went back into the wilderness. Uh, Joseph being sold into slavery. Job uh, having literally everything and then it all being stripped away. Jeremiah, uh, Elijah, whenever the prophets of Baal came against him and how he had to basically fight uh, old Jezzy, Jezebel. Uh, mm -hmm. Elisha being ridiculed because of his appearance. They called him Baldy. Just little things like that, like the old uh, prophets of old. And then knowing how the disciples, how they handled persecution, how Paul 
Um, it said in 2 Corinthians 11, uh, 24 through 28, I won't read it, but he basically talks about all of his vast sufferings that he went through. But what did he keep doing? He kept pressing forth and he kept advancing the kingdom because whenever persecution happens and whenever persecution caused the first church to scatter, that was the advancement of the gospel. And if there was no persecution, I believe we would not have any gospel today that they had back then. And, you know, you, you look at uh, Andrew, he Amen. was crucified. Bartholomew, he was beaten and crucified. James, he was beheaded. John, he was, we all know that story. He was boiled in oil and he got sent to the island of Patmos. Judas, uh, not Iscariot, the other Judas, stoned to death. Matthew, speared to death. Peter, crucified upside down. Philip and Simon, crucified. Thomas, speared to death. And Matthias, speared to death too. So they were all martyrs because... Mm -hmm. They did not bow down to the government at the time, frankly, the religious system at the time that said, hey, if you're not going to submit to me, here's what's going to happen to you. And what they what did they not do? They didn't submit because they knew that if they submitted, that would go against the very foundation of what the Lord did to them. And I think this whole entire conversation, we can wrap it up in verse Matthew 5, verses four, verse 44. Love our enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Yep. And yeah. I'll tell you, I don't know about I don't know about y'all, but oftentimes whenever somebody comes against me or comes against my family or comes against my integrity or comes against my testimony, it lights me up. Yep. And oftentimes my first reaction is not to pray for them. Nope. And it's not to love them if I'm just being very transparent. And nope. the Lord Amen. has really had to work in me and through me in that area. Mm -hmm. And he's really had to, to strip away the old me. He's had to strip away the flesh. He's had to strip away the, the pride, frankly, because a lot of times whenever that happens, my first thing, instinct is, is to go into that protector mode, right? Like the dad mode, mm -hmm. the, the, the big rough and tough football player mode. Like I'm not going to allow this to happen to my family. But Pamela, going back to what you said, I always have to think about the meekness of Jesus. And that is power mm -hmm. under control. It's it's mm -hmm. knowing that I can flip a table and bash your head in, but it's also knowing that that's not the way that the Lord would respond. And I also right. know from experience that, you know, the, the best way to handle those situations is if you just don't react, if you don't respond, you just let people get what they need to say out. Yep. And then you say, hey, I bless you in Jesus' name. Yep. And yep. oftentimes mm -hmm. it'll probably make them very upset at first. But that'll just show the true love of the Father. Because, yeah. again, Jesus could have called down a legion of angels because he had that much power. But he said, no, I know my assignment. And I know what I have to do. And I believe that our assignment is Matthew 5, 44. You love your enemies because it's a heck of a lot easier to love somebody that loves you versus love somebody who's coming against you. But I believe yeah. that whenever you love your enemy, that just puts Jesus on display. Yeah. That was Jesus and, on display like anything else. And yeah. we pray for those who persecute you. And what we found yeah. in our life, that whenever we intentionally pray for somebody, a lot of times it's like, okay, God, um, okay, like, <laughs> bless them. Bless them, Lord. And then it gets to the point to where, like, no, Lord, like, we bless their marriage in the name of Jesus. Yeah. We bless their children in the name of Jesus. Yeah. We, we plead the blood of Jesus over them. No weapon formed against them shall prosper in the Jesus name of Jesus. Name. We know the plans that you have for them, declares the Lord. Mm -hmm. And then we go to war for that person. And oftentimes mm -hmm. what it does, it, it yeah, I'm, I'm sure our prayers are effective because they, they come from a righteous person and they unveil with much. But oftentimes, man, that transforms it us does. and it changes mm -hmm. our heart. And it's like, okay, God, mm -hmm. thank you for that process because now yeah. throughout that, I'm more like you. And at the end of the day, yeah. We have to model our life after Jesus because if we don't model our life after Jesus, we're going to model our life after the enemy. Because if we're living for the world and if we're living against the Lord, we're automatically living for the enemy. There's there's no in between. If you're not Amen. living for the Lord, you're living for the enemy. Yeah. And so I, I just, uh, yeah, just that, that verse, you know, I've read it a hundred times, but just studying for this message that Matthew 5, 44, that that really had a, a Holy Spirit, you know, right hook <laughs> for sure. Yeah. yeah. And the anointing, let you... cost, the anointing will cost you everything, you know? Yes. Yeah. You got to You got to crush and beat and press the olives to get the oil. Yeah. Come and on. You know, we have to be able to 
we have to be willing to have that happen to us, you know, um, second Corinthians, um, which one was it? I wrote it down somewhere, but Satan is the God of this world, you know? Mm -hmm. So he is the one who's doing everything of the world. We have to make sure that we are not like the world and mm -hmm. fully devoted to the Lord because the kingdom of God is for those who live fully devoted for him and therefore are persecuted in his name. And I'm willing to, to, you know, as much, I have to remind myself. And, and I know that sounds bad because when you think about family and stuff, we love family. We love our close friends. We love the people closest to you that, that the Lord gave you, but it's temporary. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's That's temporary. It. And we have to be willing to say he's number one. And sometimes we have to put our loved ones, even the closest to us on the line and Great. say, you know what? Like, Y'all living for the world. You don't understand. This is what we're doing. We have to be about the father's business. I think it's no where our identity stems from too. Like, Identity's you know, huge. it says we're, we are co-heirs with Christ Jesus. Yep. And that's, that's one of the most powerful verses in the Bible, in my opinion, because if we're truly co-heirs with Christ Jesus, and if we have the mind of Christ, and if our mind is seated in heavenly places, how can we have room to think of earthly things? Yep. Right. And mm -hmm. like knowing that we are, literally a son of the God who created this whole entire universe. Like to me, that just mm -hmm. absolutely blows my mind. Uh, we were just down in Florida yeah. a couple of weeks ago on vacation. I, I always love sitting at the beach and spending time with the Lord. It's like, Lord, at any point in time, you could literally flood this whole entire world. Now you promised that you weren't going to do that, but just like knowing and, and just picking up a, a, a handful of sand and knowing that you created and place and formed every single drop of sand. You know, it's like we mm -hmm. we have access to all of that. We have access to that power. And it just, it, it does something to me whenever mm -hmm. I think about that. And whenever mm -hmm. I think about where our true yeah. identity comes from, yeah. because it doesn't, there's yeah. no confusion whenever we know Jesus. Like whenever we walk mm -hmm. and lock and step with him, yeah. we know where we're going. We know where our identity comes from. Amen. Yeah. Amen. What were you about to say? Oh, I wanted to say that uh, even Jesus, when he was taking his last breath, he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Wow. And mm -hmm. when we have went through a season of where I had to go in the closet and say, Lord, what happened to them for them to treat me like they they did? How do I need to pray for them? Because the way, the way they treated me, obviously something happened to them that they need, they need praying for. Mm. Yeah, because hurt people hurt people. Mm -hmm. Hurt people are the ones that's persecuting people yeah. right and, and hurt people are they don't understand the goodness of the father yeah. and so that's kind of where you know man if we can just keep our eye on the prize mm -hmm. like that was the beautiful thing about jesus is he knew why he was sent do we know why we were sent can can we keep our eyes come on church like yeah. can we keep our eyes on the prize mm -hmm. do you understand why god created you it all goes back to the heartbeat that God gave you, the breath, the breath that he put in your lungs, the thumbprint he put mm -hmm. on your hand. Right. Is like, do you understand the purpose why you were made? Because through purpose, it takes a process. Everybody loves yeah. the product, but everybody hates the process. <laughs> Come on, somebody like yeah. we, we, we always see the people in these mega places, whether it's a CEO of a company and we're just starting out or it's a huge ministry and we're just at groundwork. Right. We see the product, but we don't understand what those individuals sacrificed, what they went through, mm -hmm. the pain, the sleepless nights, the hurt, the blood, the sweat, the yeah. tears. Right. That yeah. they suffered. Right. To get to where they're at. Mm -hmm. So that's what I want to how I want to kind of leave this tonight is I want to encourage you like at, you. We don't know the process that people have paid right. and we certainly don't understand the, the, the pain that people have went through that they're offended. Mm -hmm. that they're only lashing out and ready to persecute people. Yeah. And so, you know, we have to be able to keep, take our mind off of the individual mm -hmm. and put our eyes on Christ and the reason he yes. created us. Mm -hmm. Like, because Christ himself was the only one that carried all the gifts all at once. Right. But like we, we can carry sometimes maybe two, maybe three. Right. But, but our focus, like if you're born a prophet, Jezebel is going to try to destroy you and persecute you because mm -hmm. that they, she wants to extinguish that prophetic gift mm -hmm. in your life. If you're an evangelist, 
persecution will come the first time you get in front of people. They will tell you, man, that message was horrible. You just yeah. weren't that good. And why? Not because the message wasn't good. Not because you didn't bring the fire, but because the enemy went, uh oh, who can I infiltrate now? Whose mind can I play with? Because honestly, if 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 we get, <laughs> oh man, this one this one's going to hit us hard. But <laughs> if we speak to fifty people and forty eight loved it and two hated it, we're going to take the two. Yeah, that's the mental persecution. Even I believe mm-hmm. that you were talking about. Yeah. Like, why do we do that? Right? Yeah. Because the enemy's behind it. He's trying to push us. And if we give him ground, mm-hmm. right? So we, we have to keep our eyes on the prize. Mm-hmm. We have to keep our eyes on understanding God's purpose in our life. And that that's, that's you said it earlier. That's what Jesus did. Jesus was always able to say, I have something bigger I'm serving. Mm-hmm. That there are more than just me. That mm-hmm. It's more than just this mortal body, right? And, and I can't compromise the calling on my life. I can't, I can't be locked down by the persecutor. Right. I have to move forward in God's plan for my life. And, and, and that is what brings the next level of glory into your life. So um, I, I want to open this up tonight and, uh, and and begin to just, you know, allow you to if, if you want prayer tonight for anything, if you've just been battling anything in your life and you could just put an asterisk in the comments. But um, please, please, guys, you know, if you can share the message, this is how you support. Uh, the ministries, right, is, is we just get out there and support one another. So share um, and, and, and you know, tag your friends in it. But I just want to be able to pray right now for, for me and Pamela and Josh and Sierra, just to be able to pray for you guys tonight uh, because there's power in the, in, in the prayers, right? And you're, you're not being persecuted alone. We're a body. Mm-hmm. You know, the Bible tells us that we mourn together, we yeah. laugh together, right? If, if, if you're going through something, mm-hmm. we're going through yeah. it with you. Mm -hmm. Right. We want to be there and embrace you as a brother and a sister. And and no matter what that looks like, uh, you you too, brother Zach. um, Good to see you. Bless you as well, brother. And so uh, I I just want to I just want to be able to to be a blessing. Right. Uh, we, we, We want to be a blessing in the body to one another and to be able to lift each other up and encourage one another and to help us help us in this walk because we're all at different processes, but we're all going through something. Amen. 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 And so sister Julie, we would be honored. We would be honored to pray for you. Yes. Um, we just an opportunity to, I'm going to lock this one in. So, Father God, Lord, I thank you for this mighty woman of God. I thank you for the lives that she has impacted, Father. I thank you for the gifts and the callings that are without repentance, Father God. Lord, I just speak a blessing over her mind right now, Father God. Every whisper of the enemy shall be silenced. We declare right now that every weapon formed against her shall not prosper. We command every voice of the liar to shut up right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, I just ask right now that Holy Spirit just minister to this mighty woman, Father God. Lord, the revelation that she has, Lord, has changed even my life. And I thank you for her. I value her, Father. And Lord, let her feel not only the value of the people that she's impacted, Father God, but most of all, let her feel the value that you have for her, Father. I ask you to fill her with fire right now in the name of Jesus Christ, Father God. Lord, I speak to every thought, every hindering spirit that has tried to trip her up. We break it right now in the name of Jesus Christ. We plea a bloodline right now around her home. Lord, we even speak to ministering angels and tell them to go right now and beat back every principality that's not of Holy Spirit, that's not of the kingdom of heaven. We declare heaven over her home, over her mind, over her will, and over her emotions, Father God. Lord, I thank you for her, Father. I yes. thank you for her husband, her children, Father, yes. for the seed that she will leave in this earth, Father yes. God, and Lord, for just the incredible, incredible, monumental woman that she is, Father God. So, Lord, we yes. bless her right now in the name of Yeshua. Yes. Lord, we speak life and life more abundantly. We speak even deeper revelation right now in the name of Jesus Christ. We speak a peace that surpasses all understanding, Father God. Lord, we just thank you for her, and we just thank you for the overflow of your presence, for your peace, for your love, for your understanding in her, Father God, and for most of all, Father, the wisdom that you have given her that she shared with us, Father. I thank you for her, Father. I thank you for her, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name. Yes. Julie, I I don't know if you 
So, sorry, Pamela, I didn't mean to cut you off. I, I apologize. It's lagging on our end. Okay. Um, Julie, I, I don't I don't know you from Adam. Um, so if I'm completely wrong about this, please let me know. But as um, as they were praying, I just got a vision of you almost in like a classroom setting. So I don't know if you're a teacher. I don't know if you teach the word of God, but I, I do believe that there is a teacher anointing on your life, Julie. And I just, it was almost like you were in a, you were in a classroom with multiple, um, it was almost, I think they were kids. They could be, they could be adults, but that you were teaching those, those human beings about the word of the Lord. And I believe that the Lord is legitimately going to increase the amount of people that you're able to teach, because I feel like the Lord uh, has seen what you have done for the kingdom of, of heaven and you have been trusted with little. So the Lord is automatically upgrading you into a lot. And I believe that there's going to be almost like a, I, I really do believe there's a mothering grace on your life too. And Jack just said, you know, you have children. So I, I, I don't, I don't think it's just from a children perspective, but I believe that you have plenty of spiritual sons and daughters and I believe that that's only going to increase. And I believe that as you advance in terms of, of years in your life, I believe that that spiritual lineage is going to continue. And I believe that the spiritual grandsons and granddaughters, they're going to point back to the impact that you've made on their life, Julie, from that just that mothering and that grandmothering spirit. And I, I just bless that in the name of Jesus that that again, that that teaching would would only increase, and that the Lord um, would just continue to to give you more wisdom. Would would just increase your wisdom and your capacity to hear more from heaven, so that you could take what you receive from heaven and you could transfer that into those that you have influence on. So we just bless you, Julie, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'll, I, I'll give him that confirmation of all those words, Sister Julie, after uh, <laughs> after we get off the live. So she actually runs a school. She has a school. Um, oh, wow. So absolute spot on, spot on word. All right. So um, I'm going to bring this one up. All right. For decision, we want to pray right now. So, Father God, Lord, we thank you. Your word. Lord, we just gently bring, Lord, you tell us to enter the throne room boldly, and that's such an incredible thing by the grace of, of, of you, Yeshua, um, that you poured out your, your, your blessings uh, of blood, Father, and we just thank you for the blood that has never lost and will never lose its power because you tell us to enter the throne room boldly. And Father God, Lord, we just bring your word back to you, Father. Lord, you tell us, you tell us in your word that if we lack wisdom, let him ask. And you'll give it to us and you'll be happy to do it, Father. So we just simply speak that right now for our sister, Heather. Father, I just bless her with wisdom. Father, I bless her with, I, I, I just sense faith. So sometimes faith gets shaken in the, in, the, in the pressing. And so, Father God, Lord, I just ask you to overflow her with faith, Father God. Lord, you give us a measure of faith and you expect us to increase it. But you understand humanity and how we flow sometimes, Father God. So, Lord, you change the heart of Pharaoh. You can change our hearts in very many situations, Father God. So I just I just ask you, Father, to send her a sign. Lord, you even did it for Gideon. As, as he laid out a cloth, Father God, you allowed it to be dry and then wet. So, Lord, I just ask you to just confirm your word with Heather, Father God. Lord, help her. Help her in her faith that she li just lays on your word. And, and I'm, I'm even hearing that for a word for you, Heather, to just lay on his word. To lay before him prostrate and put the Bible under wow. your head and lay on his word because you're coming into a time of life that yeah. God's wanting you to rely just solely on him. Mm. And he's just bringing you forward. He's just bringing you forward wow. and he's 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 building your faith in this season. So just begin to get prostrate before him. Give him all yeah. things, Father. And Lord, I just bless her with comfort. I just bless her with. Oh, Lord, strength through the family issues, Father God, Lord, that you would see that you would know, Father God, exactly where her heart is, Father. And Lord, you would just you would just let her know that you have you're proud of her, that you have seen where she's been. You have seen the tears that have been cried. You have ha have heard the words that's been not said and the ones that have been said, Father God. So, Lord, we just bless Heather in this next decision that she has to make in her life, mm. Father God. And Lord, help her help her even in her home status. 
um, even where she's where she's been and where she's going. Father God, Lord, help her just to have wisdom in this season of her life. Father, we just bless Heather right now with an overflowing of faith in you, God. Yeah. Yeah. Sure Heather, I, I, as Jack was praying, I feel like the enemy has tried to come against your identity. And I feel like he's, he's tried to come against you um, knowing whose you are. And I feel like there's been situations in your life to where uh, you've walked through a lot of things that we've talked about on this live over the last couple of hours whether that's mental bondage, whether that's emotional um, persecution, things of that nature. But the Lord is inviting you, Heather, into a deeper place with him. And I wholeheartedly agree with Jack, and that, there was no coincidence that he prayed that. I believe that um, the, I almost got just like a, an image. I don't know if you guys have seen this painting, but it's like it's Jesus hanging on the cross and it's this woman literally just bringing all of her garbage and all of her baggage and just dumping it at the feet of Jesus. And I feel like the Lord wants you to dump all of the stuff that you've been carrying at the feet of Jesus, yeah. because we were never created to carry all of the stuff. And that's a, that's a, mm -hmm. that's a distractive tactic. The enemy wants to use on your life, Heather, because he wants to come against your mind so that he he, he knows that if he comes against your mind and he takes you out of your mind, he knows that he can take you out. So I just bless that in the name of Jesus. And I also just bless that whenever uh, the Lord says that his, uh, his yoke is easy and his burden is light. And we speak a light burden. And I also sense that a lot of that garbage and a lot of that baggage, a lot of that was just heavy burdensome stuff. Maybe even from your childhood. Maybe there was some past trauma. Um, maybe it was even from a lack of a father figure. And that was actually another thing that that I felt whenever Jack was praying is that um, you, I want you to just know who you are from not just an identity standpoint, but you are a daughter of the Most High King, and you are a daughter to King Jesus. And regardless of of who your earthly father is, he may be a great father, he may not be, but I feel like the Lord wants you to know that 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 Heather, that you're loved, that you're seen, that the God of heavenly hosts has knitted you together in your mother's womb and you are alive on this earth today for such a time as this. So we bless that, lay everything down at the feet of Jesus and he will see you through in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. I was sensing that too, family. Like there's been, you've been almost been on an island um, and, and it's caused a lot of uh, animosity and, uh, and, and, and just um, hurt. So, uh, Rely on God in this time. He's going to see you through. Amen. So, uh, Miss Kim, for you and Chris, oh, my goodness, I love you guys so much. And uh, it would be my honor to pray for you guys. So, Lord, we just ask you to bless uh, yes, Kim Lord. and Chris, Father God. Lord, Lord, we speak a blessing over this marriage, Father God. Lord, I just speak peace and understanding, Father God. Lord, we just rebuke every ounce of the devourer out of that house right now, Father God. What's come to steal, kill, and destroy, we rebuke it right now in the name of Jesus Christ, Father. Every ounce of Leviathan has tried to twist the words, Father God, we rebuke it right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, even the Apollyon spirit that has come to destroy, that destroyer spirit, we break it and bind it right now in the name of Jesus that has come to destroy the lives of Chris and Kim. Lord, we break it and bind it right now. Lord, I just ask for peace and overflow. You are the Prince of Peace, Father God. And where you are, there is peace. So we just ask right now, Father God, that you flood into that home. Lord, you flood into that home in your presence, Father, in your fire, in your glory, Father. I thank you for two individuals that are so passionately after you, that are so in love with you, Father, that are so in love with one another, Father God. So, Lord, everything that's made them take their eyes off of that love, that's tried to distract them from who you created them to be as one. Father, we break and bind it right now. 
Lord. And I speak a oneness. I speak a oneness, Father. I ask that your Holy Spirit would just go to them right now and be the thread that knits everything back together, Father God. Lord, we break every soul tie right now off of that thing. Every every perverse spirit that's tried to come against them, that's tried to separate, we command it out of their home right now, Father. I just ask you to, to, to undo all the things that the enemy has done, every word curse that's even been spoken inside of that house, Lord. I just ask you to undo it, Father. You know the trauma. You know the, the, the effort that they have given one another with so many things going on, Father God. So, Lord, I just ask that you would you would just put before them the reason that they were married, the reason that first love as they fell in love with one another, Lord, just as they love you, Father God, and you tell us not to depart from our first love, Father. I just speak that over them, that they would even not depart their first love for one another, Father God. I thank you for the incredible gifts and the callings, Father God. Lord, I thank you that they are called by your name to do work in the kingdom for you, Father. And Lord, I just speak that kingdom of heaven over their home right now. I thank you for their amazing children, Father. I thank you for the amazing, uh, the, the, the amazing um, family that they have together. I thank you for even the amazing lineage that they have, Father God, with one another. And Lord, we rebuke the devourer. We rebuke the destroyer right now off of their marriage, off of their individual lives, off of their jobs. Yes. Oh, I, I hear that, that there's been stress coming from the job area. And Lord, we just rebuke that right now. We speak the blood of Jesus over their jobs. Both of them, both of them. I just sense that there has been a, 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 an attack coming from uh, the jobs on each side. So Lord, we just thank you right now that the blood of Jesus cover them. Let them have favor. Let them have favor in Jesus name, in Jesus name, Father God, Lord, we just speak a oneness in the spirit of Kim and Chris that, that they would they would they would even learn even more on how to fight the spiritual things that they are facing in Jesus name. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for that. We thank you, Jesus. Um, Kim, I don't know if you or Chris were maybe in the military. Um, I heard the word uh, soldier. Um, you know, I don't know if that has anything to do with a, a military standpoint, or it could just be a soldier for the Lord. And also as Jack was praying, I got an image of, um, I don't know if you guys have seen like a fault line, like I really can't explain it, but like an earthquake fault line. And a lot of times <clears throat> there's a major fault line, which is where a lot of the earthquakes are. And then there's little like cracks and crevices that are the, the smaller little quakes and stuff like that. And I feel like the enemy has brought into your camp a, a fault line that has tried to take you both out, that has tried to take your marriage out, and then separately, even unknowingly to each other, that has tried to take you out mentally, that has made and is almost like perverted and twisted uh, the way that you view each other potentially. Um, maybe it's physical, maybe it's spiritual. Uh, but I do believe that there is that there is that battle going on. And I do believe I, I'm just I'm, I'm kind of getting this as I'm going. So bear with me. I do believe that the soldier piece, I do believe that it's coming back to this fault line piece that the Lord is calling you both to be each other's soldier so that uh, Kim, you need to pray for Chris. Chris needs Come to on. pray for you, Kim, because there's power and unity where the spirit of the Lord is. There is freedom. Whenever two or more are gathered, he is in your midst. And I believe that you both need to go back to the throne room and say, okay, God, I don't know what we've done knowingly or unknowingly together or, or separately, but I want to come back into the unity where two, actually three become one, where a three chord strand is yeah. not easily broken in the name of Jesus. Amen. So we bless that. We bless your marriage. We bind any any attack from the enemy over your minds in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Holy Spirit, just touch them tonight in their dreams. May you speak to them on a deeper level and let them know that they are soldiers for the King Jesus in Jesus' name. name. That's good. Amen. And you are on it. Those are, they are two incredible, powerful, loving people of God. That's so, so good. Such good people, man. I love them dearly. And Josh, I'm gonna let you start off here because this is uh, somebody that 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 you know, and so I'm gonna let you let you run with this. Yep, yep. Um, before I pray for Cameron, I think there was one down. Well, there is one down here for Brandon. I think we may have missed that. Um, so I'm gonna go. I know Brandon too. Um, Brandon and I go go way back. He's a Kingdom Warrior. So I'm gonna pray right. for Brandon real quick, 
Um, and then I'll yep. go out to Cameron as well. Um, so just a backstory, I've known Brandon for the past six years and Jack, I need to introduce you to him actually. So Brandon has an incredible testimony. Um, you want to talk about a full blown alcoholic. You want to talk about a guy, um, using, using drugs, just all this kind of stuff. And what the Lord has done through this man has been absolutely radical. This guy is on fire. He's saved. He's set free. He's anointed. And what he's doing in the Celebrate Recovery community, what he's doing in the, the Recovering Addicts community is going to literally shape how the world views addicts. It's absolutely wow. incredible. Yep. And uh, he's, he's powerful in the name of Jesus. So, so uh, yeah, Brandon, I, I just bless you, man, in the name of Jesus. I bless um, where you have came from and where you're at now, the journey. It's been beautiful to see that yeah. journey unfold. And I, I do, I want you to know, Brandon, that I'm just hearing this now, like the Lord is well pleased. The Lord has seen the trials and he's seen the the times to where, wherever you maybe have even questioned, like God is it even worth it to stay sober. Is it even worth it to keep pressing on towards your kingdom? And the Lord says, yes. He says, well done, my good and faithful servant. He has trusted you. I'm serious. He has trusted you with the little going back to the rock, man, with those handful of handful of addicts. And then he kind of upgraded that to the CR community in uh, Centralia. Now your influence is spreading out to the greater St. Louis area and that Southern Illinois area. Yeah. This is just the beginning. The God is God is literally going to take you around the country, potentially even the world, the country right now, to share the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ and to share your testimony because your testimony is going to shake the it's going to shake the religious ground that yes. this that this country has been built on, and it needs a good shaking. And I believe that he's aligning you, Brandon, with people that are going to say, hey, son, I want to lock arms with you and I want to take you to the next level. And I don't know who those people are. Probably going to be people that you might not expect, people that may have heard your testimony from somewhere. But I just bless that man in the name of Jesus. And we just bless your marriage in the name of Jesus. Uh, we bless you and Brandy and your children. We bless the witness that you guys have, the testimony that you guys have, the story that you guys have the love of Jesus that you guys have. Yeah. And uh, we just we just claim the blood of Jesus. We speak the blood of Jesus over you guys. No weapon formed against you shall prosper in the mighty name of yeah. Jesus. And just bless your finances, man, because ultimately we know that growing the kingdom, a lot of times that does take finances. So we just bless that in the name of Jesus. And I also see, uh, I see kingdom entrepreneurship all over your life, man. I see kingdom business. And I know that that's an area in which you've, you've focused in on the past. Uh, but I also believe that, that the Lord is expanding that. And, um, and we just bless your preaching and rehab every Sunday from now on. I pray that uh, even whenever you're starting to grow in, in the faith and in connection and community, I just pray that the Lord would always have you just at that local level, never, ever forgetting where you came from, but all the while training you for where you're going. So we just bless you. We bless your family. We bless your children in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I, I just speak a blessing over uh, over you as far as the people that surround you. Um, God, God places the correct people around you as, as you as you lift off. And so I just thank you that that you're not going to preach from a theological standpoint. You're going to preach from a life that's lived, mm -hmm. and, and and it's going to make a huge impact. You know, Revelation twelve eleven. We overcome the enemy by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. When we do not love our life unto death, mm -hmm. we can't ever forget that last part. And, 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 and so I thank you that you're just gonna, you're just going to live a life lived. And I rebuke every guilt, shame and condemnation spirit that's tried to come against you. Everything that's whispered to you about your past. Mm -hmm. I just declare I, I, myself. I was I was a meth addict. I was a drug addict, sold drugs, alcoholic, the whole nine yards. And so. Um, I, I know sometimes he can creep back in and try to say, you're not worthy of this. Mm -hmm. We were just having this conversation. Mm -hmm. It took me forever to get baptized with uh, the evidence of speaking in tongues because salvation was good enough for me. I just I felt the love of the father. So I was like, that's good enough. I don't need anything else. Right. And so it took me forever to get over the guilt and the shame to be able to receive the, the gifts of, of, of prophecy and releasing things and words of knowledge and words of wisdom and, 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 and having the faith you know, to even walk on those things, but especially in tongues. And, and, and I, I'm not feeling that, that you haven't received that 
Um, but I, I do feel like you're going to have to be equipped uh, in a deeper level of breaking guilt, shame and condemnation for your future for your future um, walk with with the Lord. And, and he's going to um, he's going to be there with you through a lot of different things. There's been a lot of traction made with you tonight, even about old friends and what you what what, what they've said about you. And but you, you do have a mindset and, and I'm just speaking from the spirit, but you do have a mindset of slide back to what there is no backsliding. Right. I'm mm -hmm. sold out. Amen. So I just thank God for you right now. And I just speak right now that the alignments, proper alignments come around you in your life right now. And I rebuke the hand of the enemy off of your life of trying to send people uh, that, that are toxic for you. Uh, even old friends and old connections. Be very careful um, about throwing out rescue wraps. Um, not everybody is going to be for you. Um, so we just speak right now a blessing of discernment. A discernment over your life Amen. in Jesus name. Wow. Uh, that's, that's good. And um, Jack is, as you're praying, I'm, I'm reading through some of these uh, comments and prayer requests. And a lot of those have, have to do with, uh, with guidance about a job or guidance about a next life move. And as I was reading those, I, I just felt the spirit of the Lord just kind of invade this live. And I've really felt it throughout the whole entire time of, almost like a, a navigational beacon and a, nav and a navigational compass. And um, I, I've never really owned a, a compass, truthfully. I've only seen pictures of them because I have a compass on my phone. Um, but I just got like a, an image of like an old school, like pocket compass to where you, you flip it open. And I do believe that like the, the due north, which is important on a compass, that the Lord wants us all to know on this live that, that he is the due north, that he is the guiding light. And that there, yeah. there is an there is an attack in this day and age uh, towards the direction of where our life is heading, and the enemy wants to to basically uh, take that compass and he wants to trample it underneath his feet, and he wants to take that that lighthouse and that navigational beacon, like a, a lighthouse on a coast. What he wants to do, he wants to smash that light so that you're sailing in the darkness. Well, I just want to speak that mm. the navigational beacon, that navigational light would shine so bright that it's almost like you're just standing before the throne, that you know exactly where to where to go. And like sailors of old, you would look to the North Star. You would look to due north, wherever the spirit of the Lord is, and that you would walk by faith, that you would not walk by sight, that things that are that have not come to fruition yet, things in the unseen those things are going to be into the scene in the name of Jesus. And I believe that that the God of, of the universe, he's literally wants to partner with you right now. And everything that you're everything that you're praying for, everything that you're tearing for, everything that you're pressing in for, I, th I think a lot of times, at least I know in my life, we overcomplicate a lot of things. And I just went through, I just got our our son was born three months ago, two weeks after he was born. I got laid off from my job, sole provider. Uh, I just started my new job this last uh, Monday, but you know, I was jobless for the past two and a half months. And throughout that process, like it's really shown me that I had to strip away everything that I thought that I knew. And I had, I had to look towards the Lord where my help comes from. And I do believe that everybody on this live, I do believe again, the Lord wants you to know that he is the due North. Stop overcomplicating things and that you're going to see the navigational beacon just shine through at a brighter level in the name of Jesus. And Cameron, I, I speak Praise that God. over you as well. Praise. I speak that over your guys' situation. I know that um, there's there's kind of a figuring out phase that you guys are going through. What's next in your life, whether it's the fishing charter, whether it's staying here, whether it's going down to Charleston, whatever that, whether, yeah, whether it's um, starting back into the construction business, there's just a lot of a lot of good things, but oftentimes in the good things that can convolute the great things. And I just speak the great things of the Lord over your guys' life and over your marriage and over what's next for you guys in the name of Jesus, because you guys have been faithfully uh, pursuing him. And I know that uh, you said your, your marriage needs prayer and your walk with Jesus needs prayer. But I, I, I just uh, I actually have it written down right here and my eye just caught to it. Uh, Romans 8 1 therefore there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus and I want you to know that that you don't have to feel condemned that even though your relationship with Jesus might not be where you want it to be there's so much grace we've been saved by grace through our faith in Christ Jesus so there's grace for that you've recognized it and the Lord is just inviting you into a deeper place of relationship 
and also for your marriage too. I pray that you guys would set healthy uh, boundaries with your family, healthy boundaries, even with each other. And then also healthy boundaries with your kids. Uh, as a father of young kids myself, it's really easy to put our identity into our kids and into our marriage and into what makes us a father. But I feel you, uh, you and Josh, probably you, you more specifically, Cameron, because you're, you're in the thick of it, right? Like, like Sierra is, it's so easy for everything that you do to be surrounded with your kids. But I do believe that through this time, there's so much grace in that process. But I believe that the Lord, I, I hear the word prioritization. And I, I, I feel like the Lord wants you to prioritize those little moments. It doesn't have to be uh, staying up until five o'clock in the morning, reading your Bible for 10 hours straight, right? Like it's, it's in between the nap times. It's in between the chicken nuggets and the mac and cheese. It's, it's in between, you know, the TV times or the baths that the Lord wants you to have those small intimate moments with you. So we just, we bless you wow. and Josh in the name of Jesus. Um, I just want to speak to you right now that you're going to find the deep things of God sim simply. You're going to find the deep things of God simply. Mm. I'm just going to uh, just just you know just let that soak in because that's what the Lord's telling you right now. Like uh, you you spent a lot of time focusing on the, uh, the things that went wrong, and He just wants you to just focus on Him mm -hmm. and simply seek His love. Like He loves you, He's never departed. He hasn't he hasn't pictured you in your downfalls. He hasn't judged you by your downfalls. You've kept your heart right after him. And there's been a lot of trials and tribulations. A lot of people speaking into you. There's a lot of, there's a lot of foreign voices that really don't know what's best for you. That's been, been distraction. And, and, and right now, I just I just tell you to, to simply, simply get with him. Don't look at your downfalls. Don't quit beating yourself up over over little things. Quit looking at your children saying, why are my children doing this? I'm failing as a mother. You know, release that stuff. Release that stuff and simply, simply seek after God and you're going to find him speaking deep into deep. You're going to you're going to find the embrace like you've never found it before. Like you, you, you've been in this place of just going, why, God, I, I'm just not as far along as I should be. And this is happening. This is happening. I failed here. I don't feel like I'm far along enough here. And all these things have clouded you. So right now, I just speak to you to, to simply seek him and you're going to find the deep things. Mm -hmm. wow. Amen. And so I just speak a blessing of peace over your mind right now. Um, moms out here right now, man, you guys are so valuable mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, such such an open target, right? The enemy hasn't changed his tactics. Like he tries to come at you guys when when, when we're not when we're doing what we shouldn't be doing, or we're just not uh, spiritually present, right? Mm -hmm. And so you guys are so valuable, so, such amazing, honorable people and, and creatures. The way you guys were built, like you were always thinking, you're always trying to figure out the outcome, always wor worried about everybody else, and it's such a beautiful thing. But if the devil steps in and he begins to speak. And he begins to use individuals to speak, right? Mm -hmm. He can complicate things really quickly yeah. and he can really throw you in a tailspin. Mm -hmm. And so I just, I, I just speak that over you to simply seek him, simply seek him. Yeah. And you're going to find some really, really deep comfort and love in the father's arms. Yeah. Cause Amen. the devil wants you out of uh, seeking into striving. Mm. And that's what oh, he, yeah. that's how he plays. Well, the women anyways. Wow. So good. Wow. You're so full of nuggets, Pamela. Like, that's so good. <laughs> He's taking you. He wants to take you on striving. He's like, well, come on, man. Like, oh, that's so good. And she's so always good. like, well, I don't want to talk. I'm like, baby, you need to talk. Like, please talk more. Hey, it's funny because I looked at Jason. I have nothing for tonight. <laughs> Bro. Not, hey, and I told her, I said, the Holy Spirit will navigate. <laughs> Holy Spirit wow. makes it all work out. I'm over here um, taking notes. That's, that's, that's the best, the best so. times. I know. <laughs> I know. All right, so this, this is another pastor friend of ours, mm -hmm. a wonderful woman of God. What a heart after the Lord. And so thank you, Miss Diane, for being on here with us. I just bless you right now in Jesus' name. I know the trials Ooh. have been deep, Lord. I have not walked your walk. Um, but the but the persecution and the trials have been real. And I just speak blessings right now. I just speak God to fill every crevice in your heart, every place of hurt, and and, and just um, even in, in in the thoughts of your family, 
Um, I know a lot of worry comes up of what's going to what's going to happen in the future with them. And, and I just bless them right now in the name of Jesus. I just Lord, I just ask you to go even and protect. Lord, watch over. Lord, you, you your word tells us that we have ministering yes. angels sent forth yes. to minister for those that have received salvation. Father God. So, Lord, we just send our angels right now to protect these grandchildren and, and, and her daughter in law daughter in love as she calls her father god lord i thank you for that heart that she shares that she loves her daughter-in-law so much and her grandchildren mm -hmm. father and lord i just pray for them that you would help them in their loss father yes, god. god lord that you would just bless them where they are father lord i just ask that your peace and presence fill that house because where the spirit of the lord is there is freedom yeah. there is no anxiety yes, there is no no sadness there is no no hurt there is no yes, pain god. father god and lord we know that no one no one will ever take the place Yes, God. Of Miss Diane's son, Father God. Lord, we know that no man could ever take the place, Father God, but Lord, you are God. And where your presence is, it fills all space, Father God. So, Lord, we just ask you to bless Miss Diane right now, Father God, that we just speak a blessing of peace and comfort and the fire of God. Lord, the fire of God. And Lord, that the morning that comes in the night, Lord, that there will be joy in the morning, Father God. Lord, that even though we, we go through the morning at night, Father, we just speak joy for the morning, Father God. Lord, we just bless her in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus. Yes. Diane, is, I, I have chills right now. So before Jack even mentioned that about your son, I literally, as God is my witness, I felt him drop in my spirit. Through the loss, everything is going to be okay. I know that's not super profound, but mm. I want you to know that the Lord is saying that everything is going to be okay. And again, I haven't walked in your shoes. I don't ever proclaim or profess to, but I know that we all know how great our God is. And he wants you to know, Miss Diane, that everything is going to be okay. And your grandchildren yeah. and your daughter in love, they're going to be okay. And the Lord, mm -hmm. I also see just the image of, I don't know how many grandchildren you have, probably a handful, but like the Lord just kind of scooping them up in his hands. It's almost like our little baby. I don't know if you saw him, he's three months old. And it's almost just like you just snuggle this little baby. And it's like the loving hands and arms of the father. He's coming around your family. He wants you to know that everything's going to be okay. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. And we, Miss Diane, reach out to us sometimes. We'd love to break bread with you guys and just just love on you. You've you've made such an impact. Yeah. We still have the dishes that you guys bought, yeah. the, the the pots and pans you <laughs> bought us for our marriage. So yeah. we, we, and we talk about you all the time, and we love you dearly. I don't even think they make dishes like that anymore. I'm saying, <laughs> I'm they saying still, fifteen still years, good. fifteen years, yeah. and we still have those pots and pans. So yeah, wow. you, you you have meant such so so much to us, and um, um, we just love you. Yeah, and and and, and we honor you. We mm -hmm. honor you as a woman of God yes. as well. Um, that that you preach fire, mm -hmm. and, and God has a great great ministry. Uh, for you and you're going to help people mm -hmm. you're going to help people who are go who go through the same thing yes. of what you went through and, and the loss and, yes. and 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 there's ministry in those grandbabies too mm -hmm. there's yeah. ministries in those grandbabies and so we, we bless you in the name of jesus uh miss tracy so good to see you on here miss tracy uh man we think about you a lot and we love you and so uh i just speak right now that you have not ran out of rope and sometimes there's there, there's times that we just feel like we are out of rope. Mm -hmm. But with, with with the calling that you have on your life, right, with the calling that you have, you have patience. Mm -hmm. um, you minister to so many different women uh, through your through your uh, business uh, and, and your heart after him. And I just hear the Lord just, just telling you to even come closer. Um, mm -hmm. th there's been so much celebration of his goodness in your life that that in in, in some hard times that, that's almost become mundane um, to seek him <clears throat> because you don't feel him near you. Mm. And you, you, you've hit a dry place and, and, a, and a quiet place and you're not, you're not hearing like you were. And and God right now is is, is just he's there and his presence, his presence is with you and his presence is, is, is surrounding you. But right now he has you in a place of just 
zoning out everything else, even in the business, it's going to have to take a back seat. Mm -hmm. Everything's going to have to just take a back seat and mm -hmm. it's going to have to just be all about him. Mm -hmm. And he's never left you nor forsaken mm -hmm. you. And you're in a lonely, quiet place right now. I speak a blessing even over Wyatt. Mm -hmm. I thank yes. you for the gifts and the callings that are over mm -hmm. Wyatt's life. And Lord, we know, we know, Father God, we know that the enemy has come hard against mm -hmm. them, Father, but it's only because of the power and the presence that you have in them, Father. Yes. So, Lord, we just in bless Jesus. them right now with even more fire, mm -hmm. with more passion, with more desire after the things of you. I rebuke every spirit of Baal mm -hmm. off of them right now that's tried to mm -hmm. captivate their gifts. Lord, the root of all evil is the love of money, and it has tried to lasso Miss Tracy's mind. And she will stand strong through these trials. I break it right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I thank you that you have all things in your kingdom, Father God. Lord, I thank you that you press upon her heart that she shall seek the kingdom in your righteousness and all these things will be added to you. I thank you that her business is blessed. I thank you that her, her children, are our child is blessed. I thank you that her home is blessed, Father God. But Lord, we rebuke the devourer. We rebuke wow. the devourer, Father God, even where there's been times that there's been senses of where is it going? That, that, is there a hole in the bucket somewhere? I rebuke the devourer yes, right now Jesus. in the name of Jesus. We rebuke that mm. spirit that has tried to come uh, and make lack, Father God, mm. Lord. We rebuke it right now in the name of Jesus. And we speak fresh fire, yes. fresh fire in the name of God, oh, because where the fire is, only pureness can exist. Mm. So I thank you for for all anxiety, we break and cast mm -hmm. you out right now in the name of yes. Jesus. We speak the blood against the anxious thoughts. Mm -hmm. Get out right now in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of unworthiness, we break it right now. Every yes. shameful, lying spirit that's yes. tried to come and convict her. Every monitoring spirit that's tried to convict her. Mm -hmm. Right now, we break you in the name of Jesus Christ. We say that we have an advocate that calls us innocent. We have an advocate that has already taken the place. We have an advocate that has already taken the death. We have an advocate who's already taken the stripes. We have an advocate yes. who's already taken all things that we owe. Hallelujah. And we break you right now in yes. the name of Jesus. Thank Anxiety, Jesus. get out. Yes. Unworthiness feelings, get out right mm. now in the name of Jesus. We take dominion over you and break you in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Um, Tracy, I I heard the Lord speak into my spirit, Malachi 3, verses 6 and 7. It says, I, the Lord, do not change. So you, the descendants of Jacob, are not destroyed. Ever since the time of your ancestors, you have turned away from my decrees and have not kept them, speaking about them, obviously. But I feel like the, 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 first, the first verse or the first few words of, of verse 6 and then this is what the Lord wants you to hear. Re return to me and I will return to you, says the Lord God Almighty. I, the Lord, do not change. Return to me and I will return to you, says the Lord God Almighty. And I believe, uh, Miss Tracy, there's probably some times in your life, again, I've, I've never met you before, um, times in your life to where I, I do believe that you love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, and your soul. But I believe that there's been times in your life to where you've gotten distracted, distracted by even by good things, like some worldly things aren't always bad. Like just because you, you like a certain thing or whatever, that, that doesn't mean it's bad. Like the Lord has placed us in this world for a reason. But I believe sometimes uh, in the past you have allowed the, the things of this world to, to maybe even consume you in a stance of almost like the distraction taking you away from your first love. Because I believe that even when you were a little girl, Tracy, like the Lord – uh, the Lord marked you. The Lord probably had a, a special encounter with you and marked you at an early age. But throughout your life, um, whenever the bills come, whenever the finances come, whenever the world comes, whenever sickness comes, whenever all of the stuff comes, it's easy to lose, um, almost just, just lose, I don't want to say hope, but lose vision, lose sight. And I believe that the Lord wants you to know again, I, the Lord, do not change return to me. So there's action involved in this returning back to him. I, I, I believe you've never left him, but returning to him at a deeper level and he will return to you. He's never left you. He will never forsake you, but I'm talking like the returning to that deep intimate uh, place to where you had during that encounter or encounters, the Lord wants to meet you there and that the needs that you have are going to be met 
the strategies that you need for what's next are going to come to you in that place in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Such a woman after God's heart, man. Yes. And uh one, wonderful woman of God, mm -hmm. wonderful woman of God. And, uh, um, we just bless you. We just bless you. We love you, Tracy. Hey, Amen. We do love you, Tracy. Uh, we need to reach out and come come up there July 8th, too, if, if we haven't spoken to you by then. Um, we'd love to see you. Yeah. Um, but Josh, we, we got to talk to you and Sierra, too, man. This is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> we might need you to help minister. Come on. Um, yeah. So, uh, love you, Miss Tracy. Um, all right. And so Daryl uh, just spoke this over you, brother. Jack, before your friend shared about losing his job, I heard provision is coming to him. Jehovah Jireh is your provider. And I had to leave where you where you were so he can take you where he has now for you, mm -hmm. which will be even far better. Mm -hmm. And so Daryl is a minister from the Bahamas. And so uh, we love you, brother Daryl. He lives in a way better place than all the rest of us. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, we'll have to take a uh, we'll have to take a field trip down to see you, Mr. Daryl. And I, I received that in the name of Jesus. Thank you, thank you, man of God. I I received that, and that's exactly it. Uh, where I was wasn't bad, but um, there's some things that the Lord's doing on my heart that if I was still at that old position, uh, He wouldn't be able to do. So I received that. Mm -hmm. Amen. And brother Zach. It says you see I see a 50 foot angels all around you protecting you and I see you going into really dark places setting many people free in Jesus name Man. wow come on and I believe that the Lord just wants to remind you that even in the darkest places or spaces that he is with you amen so good so good so, Lord, man, we thank you so much. This is two and a half hours in, and I wow. could honestly go further, but uh, due to time's sake, and Sierra's like, I got all these kids. I'm trying to relax now. You got them in the bed, Sierra? <laughs> <laughs> Have you got them asleep yet? Yep. Yeah. The, the oldest uh, one's still up. Yeah. <laughs> She's or, eating mac and cheese on my couch right yeah, now. Yeah, I'm, I'm about like, to go. What? We're about to go eat a big bowl of ice cream for dinner. It's going to be glorious. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh, we love you guys so yeah. much. And thank y'all. Thank, thank y'all for being with us. Um, yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. It was yeah. Jack and Pamela, we, we just want to bless you guys mm. in the name of Jesus. And we just want to honor you guys. Jesus. And you guys are. You guys are incredible. I think a lot of times you dis you discredit and you discount the anointing that you guys Jesus. carry. And the Lord wants to remind you guys, y'all are y'all are just getting started, and y'all are warriors for the kingdom, yeah. man. And the amount of knowledge that you guys have, literally, my hand hurts from writing stuff down tonight. Like yeah. you guys are so <laughs> full of wisdom and spiritual nuggets. It's absolutely incredible. And I, I do believe that this, I know that you guys have had a ministry, but I believe that the ministry that the Lord is birthing into you, that you're going to have spiritual sons and daughters that you could pour all of the stuff out that you've learned throughout the trials and the persecutions. You're going to, you're going to be able to pour that out into those people as well. And that your net, if you will, for the kingdom of God, uh, it's going to far outreach just Georgia. It's going to spread throughout the country because of your humility, because of, Honestly, like y'all are just incredible just to be around. Like you're down home, South Georgia accents. Like you're just you y'all are y'all are country folk. You're good hearted people. And and really we in the body of Christ and outside of the body of Christ, we need more men and women like you. Mm -hmm. We need more men and women who love the Lord with all of their heart, mind, body, and soul, but who are also real, who can share the love of Jesus not from a theological standpoint, like we have enough people like that, but just from a real raw standpoint of like, Hey, look what the Lord did for me. He drug me out of hell literally. And he's placed me here and he can do the same thing for you. Like, I, I just see that. And I see that your, um, your influence is literally going to expand because of your humility. And it's not that you're, it's not in your, it's not in your trying. It's not in your, it's not in your laboring. It's not in your tearing. But no, it's it's the Lord's provision on your life. And I'm not just talking about financially. I'm just talking about just the power and the authority. And I do believe that um, the same signs and wonders that that followed the apostles whenever they were here on earth, like we're going to start seeing that more and more as we get towards the end times. 
And, you know, I, I just see like the, the picture of like the farm and Jack, like how you've been preparing the land and how you've been mowing the grass and how you've been laboring and how you've been planting seeds. And, and the Lord is, the, the Lord is about to do there what he's going to do around the nation. And I, I do believe that that's a spark of like many pockets of revival that are already starting. And it's no coincidence that uh, Jenny and the core and everybody, you know, they're doing the same thing down in, down in Florida and you're seeing it all over the country. And I want you to know that like, you're hearing right. You're hearing from the voice of the father. You're not doing this out of a fleshly standpoint. And if it's the Lord's will, he's going to pay the bill. And so we just bless that the finances will come to do this uh, because this is good fertile ground. This isn't ground to where you're just going to take it and you're going to disrespect it. This is ground that you're going to sow back into the kingdom of God and that lives are going to be impacted by your testimony. I believe that. And, and you're going to model what true humility and marriage should be. I do. I, I again, I, I don't know you guys super well, but I do see like the glue that has held you guys together. It's been really good. It's been really tight, but I almost see like, again, this isn't like super prophetic, but it's more just like, I just know I have super glue in my junk cabinet. I, I just see like the Lord squirting like that super glue around <laughs> your marriage, your covenant that what the enemy probably in times past has tried to come in and try to, to destroy you two, that there's going to be a uh, super glue of the Holy spirit that mm -hmm. no man can separate. Yeah. No, no demonic force can separate in the name of Jesus. So we love you guys. We honor you guys. It's been such a blessing. Thanks for having us mm -hmm. on. And, and uh, we're going to make it a point to come down in July for yeah. sure. Also, I feel like the Lord laid on my heart too earlier Thank on. You. What, he's, what he's doing with Global Vision is what he's going to do for you. People are going to start traveling because of what they hear from what's going on with what you guys are doing. And Ooh. I don't even know you guys very well at all. But even Pamela, I mean, for you, I see you being somebody who just steps up with boldness in this like lioness creature, you know, just speaking life and speaking unapologetically. Yep. Because I feel like uh, not knowing you, you come off so soft spoken and a woman with few words, but inside there is just so much that people need to hear. And I bless you with that yep. to step out and do that. Yep. Like you have the anointing. Yep. I see the oil on you guys. Yep. I bless you with that. The muzzle that the enemy has tried to put on your mouth, Pamela, is being removed now mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus. That all of those nuggets mm -hmm. that will come forth like a mighty river flowing from your belly in the name of Jesus. Yeah. And I, I speak that the authority that the Lord has given you, that you would know where your authority is because you do know that, but you would stand on that authority that you would know now that the muzzle is off. It's literally ripped off. It's like a bandaid when you rip it off a womb. It's not one of this whamsy pamsy. Let's just slowly take it off. No, you're it's, it's off. The Lord has ripped the muzzle off now in the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. And you're going to go forward. And you're going to speak a lot of identity and a lot of incredible things to women. And just don't ever let the enemy try to muzzle you ever again, because the muzzle has been removed and we throw that back into the fire now in Jesus. Name. Yeah. For whatever reason, too, I feel like the Lord dropped in my yeah. spirit that, that, um, you know, we all have a past. If there are women that come against you and still view you through the lens of who you want, who you were and who you not who you are today, and especially not who you're becoming. Like you have to be able to listen to who God says you are now and who you're becoming and not who you've been. Mm. And don't allow them to mm -hmm. come up and to say, you know, it's just like the accusing that we talked about earlier. Don't let those those accusing like voices mm -hmm. take you out of the calling that the Lord has for you because it's mighty. Yep. He's doing something really huge for you guys. I just see people just flocking. Great, God. Amen. Praise Thank God. Thank you guys so much. We receive every <laughs> yes. word and thank yes. praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, uh, man, we could probably keep you guys here all night just telling y'all what we've been through over the last few years and, and the, the molding that God has done forsake, not the process forsake, not small beginnings. You yeah, know, God, God is, yeah, God is so good. Um, he's, he's so good. So thank y'all so much yeah. for those, uh, words of affirmation and confirmation. And uh, we, we love you guys and, and we can't wait. We're, we're going to have a conversation after we get offline uh, and, and we, we want to talk to you guys. Um, so bless you guys. Thank you all so much. Yeah. Love y'all. Yeah. Love you. Love, love you. Guys. Love you guys. Thank love you so much. Much.
Yeah. Thank you guys, everyone, you, for joining us coming. tonight. Um, you know, if you, if you could just support us and share Enjoy. this and, and go to our YouTube. We just got a YouTube channel up. Uh, if, you've, if you're if you on here and haven't uh, subscribed to the YouTube channel yet, if you could just go hit on that, um, hit the subscribe button, hit up, hit up, hit. We've kept all of our um, uh, videos with all of our brothers and sisters that we've done up to up to now. This one will go there as well. And um, and if you could just go just to go support the ministry. So we love you and we bless you in the name of Jesus. Yes. Y'all have a good one.